Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku was kidnapped. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. You know what you should do. You should just take a swan dive off the roof and hope that you are born with a quirk in your next life. Pros are always risking their lives. I cannot simply that that you can become a hero even without power. What am I even doing? Midori aside, looking down the building. The same building that All Might had told him that a quirkless person could not become a hero. Still, Midori couldn't bring himself to hate or despise his all-time favorite hero. I'm just being silly. Kakin, All Might, everyone, they're all right. Without a quirk, I can't protect myself. Or anyone. He heard a loud bang. What? What's going on? Midori stood up, looking around. He spotted smoke coming up from the alley at the side of the building he was at. He peered down, trying to take in what was going on. He spotted the sludge monster, the one that almost killed him in the tunnel before All Might had saved him. Within its grasp was a blonde boy that was firing explosions from his hands, trying to escape. Kakin, Midoriya cried out. And before he could think, he leapt off the building and landed on the sludge monster. Let go of Kakin. Midoriya shrieked, smashing his bag into the sludge monster's face and eyes. It wasn't long All Might came and saved the duo, along with Kamui Woods and Backdraft. You sure you want this guy? He seems a bit unhinged, Hirajiri muttered, washing a glass as he stared at the monitor which showed a blonde boy screeching at the green-haired boy that had jumped in to save him. While All Might was trying to coax the crowd into leaving as the other pro heroes were lecturing the boy along with the blonde, his quirk will be useful. If he's not cooperative, we can always just steal it. The voice from the other monitor came on. Yes, Sensei. Tamura grinned behind the hand on his face. Stupid Deku. I don't need you to save me. Bakugu yelled. Why did you even come here? You looked like you needed help. Midoriya cried. Suddenly, behind Bakugu, a purple mist portal opened up. Neither of the pro heroes noticed as they were busy trying to tell Midoriya that his actions were risky. But they were confused over the sudden increase in wind speed. A hand reached out of the portal and made a grab at Bakugu. Midoriya's eyes widened in shock, and before he could realize what he was doing, he dashed past the two pros and pushed Bakugu to the side. Deku, what the fuck was that Bakugu screeched, rubbing his head, but he was cut off as he saw the hand grab onto Midoriya and started pulling him into the portal. Kid, Kamui Woods and Backdraft yelled, but braced themselves to avoid being pulling into the portal. Deku, you stupid idiot, stop trying to save me you useless fuck. Bakugu growled and leapt at Midoriya, grabbing his hand. Kamui Woods let his wood out, grabbing Bakugu before he, along with Midoriya were dragged into the portal. Stop. You'll get dragged in too. Kakin, let go. Midoriya yelped, getting tugged on both arms by the arm from the portal and Bakugu. Shut it, Deku. Bakugu growled, but Midoriya could see the desperation in his eyes. Kakin cares. That was all Midoriya needed to be happy. His friend Bully cared about him. Midoriya loosened his grip on Bakugu's hand. Hold on you fucking idiot. Bakugu yelled, gripping onto Midoriya's hand even tighter, what about your mom? Sorry, Kakin, I'm glad that you'll be safe. Bakugu's eyes widened as Midoriya let go of his hand completely, slipping through his grip as he was pulled straight into the portal. Izuku, Bakugu yelped as the portal closed. The wind stopped and Bakugu fell onto the ground, before getting up, blinking. Deku, Bakugu looked around. Where did that green-haired kid come from? I don't know. It seems like he jumped off the roof. Why was he even up there? No idea. Poor kid though. Maybe he was trying to end his life and just happened to see what was happening. Bakugu trembled. His harsh words to his childhood friend echoed through his mind. You know what you should do. You should just take a swan dive off the roof and hope that you are born with a quirk in your next life. Deku, you fucking idiot. Don't take what I was saying seriously. Bakugu trembled, tears quickly forming in his eyes as he wiped them away. Kid, are you okay? Backdraft placed his hand on Bakugu's shoulder. Shut up. You heroes are useless. You couldn't even save one kid. Bakugu growled, slapping Backdraft's hand away. He walked past the heroes, out of the alley, before something caught his eye. Midoriya's notebook, the one that he had burnt and thrown out the window. He picked it up and walked away, the crowd of passerbys opening up a path for the blonde. Backdraft attempted to go after the boy, but Kamui Woods stopped him, leave him be. He's grieving over his friend. We can save him. We finally have a lead on all these kidnappings. Bakugu walked home and opened the door. Are you okay? His mom rushed over, hugging him tightly before checking him over for injuries. I, I'm fine. Bakugu choked, tearing up again. It's about Izuku, isn't it? We heard it on the news. His mother wiped his face. Come on. Let's talk to Aunt and Co. I think she'll need some company now. Bakugu just nodded, silently. Oh, uh. Midoriya groaned, his face smacking against the cold, hard ground. Kurajiri, this is the wrong kid. Tamura sighed. 
Boy, leave K. Kakan alone. Midoriya scrambled to his feet, trying to threaten the villains to no avail. He has guts. I wonder what quirk he has that enabled him to fearlessly take on the villain though. Tamura mumbled. Suddenly, the computer on the side made sound. Tamura, grab the kid. Tamura did as he was told, grabbing Midoriya with his right hand, except for his pinky as a black gooey liquid engulfed them both. The black goop disappeared from Midoriya's sight, and he looked around in fear. Tamura, the hand guy, just dumped him on the ground and said, Sensei. The warping mist guy, Kirajiri, reappeared beside them. Ah, uh, welcome. Another guy sitting on a large chair, hidden in darkness greeted. His voice was old and raspy, and loud inhaling and exhaling sounds were heard as he spoke. He leaned forward, revealing a man with a mask with several, many tubes connected to it. Who? What? Huh? Midoriya mumbled, trying to scramble backwards, bumping into something. He tentatively looked upwards, into Kirajiri's bright, yellow, glowing eyes. Uh, Calm down. We're not gonna hurt you if you cooperate. At least, until we take your quirk. Tamura grumbled. That just made Midoriya freak out more. Tamura grabbed Midoriya and dragged him towards the old man. Let, let go of me. Midoriya struggled, trying to pry Tamura's hand off his arm, but to no avail. The skinny man with what seemed like a hand obsession was a lot stronger than he looked. Midoriya was once again dumped onto the ground, this time in front of the old man. He stretched out his hand, landing on Midoriya's shoulder, scaring the poor boy. Hmm. Interesting. The old man mumbled. What is it, sensei? What quirk does he have? Kirajiri asked. None. He's quirkless. The old man Midoriya identified as sensei replied. Kirajiri grumbled. Great. Quirkless. What do we do with him? Kill him. Tamura grinned, grabbing Midoriya's shoulder. His shirt started flaking apart, much to Midoriya's shock. He tensed up, watching as his skin was slowly revealed under his shirt that was slowly disintegrating. He yelped at Tamura finally grabbed his shoulder, his skin cracking apart, revealing his muscles. Leave me alone. Midoriya shrieked, smacking Tamura's hand away and scrambled to his feet. If you wanna kill me, I won't go down without a fight. He panted, blood dripping from where his shoulder flesh was showing. You have guts, but no strength, no power, heck you're even trembling. Tamura pointed out at Midoriya's trembling legs in a bored tone. You don't stand a chance against us. Kurajiri took out a gun, pointing it at Midoriya. Bang, bang. He waited for Midoriya to drop dead. But he managed to avoid letting the bullet hit anything fatal, but he was hit in the arm and leg. Midoriya yelped, falling onto the ground. Tamura slowly walked up to Midoriya, hand outstretched. In his panic, Midoriya tried to get back on his feet, but his injured leg refused to move and he fell on his butt. Tamura, Kirajiri, stand down, Sensei ordered. Why? Tamura whined, he's useless. He doesn't have a quirk, he's powerless. He's nothing. Kirajiri sighed, putting his gun back in its holder. You remember what happened to all the other guys. Once I took their power, they were reduced to nothing, begging for their life and mercy. This kid is trying to fight back. I think we can work with this. Sensei grinned. Plus, since you both made the mistake of having this capture broadcasted live, the heroes are bound to be searching for us. We can keep him here as a hostage. And imagine All Might's face when he tries to save the kid and ends up being killed. By a quirkless brat, Midoriya gulped. Kill All Might. At least, by Sensei's words, they may leave Kakan alone. Katsuki, at least, they didn't take you too. And Ko cried as she latched onto Bakugu, crying her eyes out. Bakugu didn't even like lashing out like he usually did, instead just staring at the wall solemnly. Midoriya, he had risked his life for him to be safe. He wasn't going to throw that away. He would get into you at all costs, for himself and for Midoriya. Where, where are you taking me? Midoriya asked, trembling as he was led, more like dragged, down a hallway by Kurajiri. Shut it, kid. Just be glad you're not dead. Yet, Kimura snarled. He was led into a room, where there was a bound and gagged person on the ground. His eyes widened at the sight of Tamura, Kirajiri and Midoriya. Now, first test. Kill him. Tamura pointed at the man as he carefully took a gun out of his pocket and tossed it at Midoriya's feet. What? No. Midoriya protested, backing away from the gun until he slammed his back against a wall. Just do it. Tamura growled, inching closer to Midoriya with his hand outstretched. Either you kill the guy or I kill you. Seeing no reply from the green-haired boy, Tamura grabbed the shoulder that was already partially disintegrated hissed. Come on. Do you want to keep suffering like this? Shut up. I don't want to kill anyone. Midoriya yelped in pain, kicking Tamura in the shin out of reflex. Kirajiri intervened before either could continue to attack. Grabbing both of their wrists, Shigaraki-san, threatening him now will not make him more cooperative. And kid, neither of us want this. Just do it. Midoriya stared at the gun. Maybe he should just kill himself? No. His mom was probably worried sick about him, and Kakin. He wanted to see his friend again. I refuse to die here, but I also don't want to kill anyone. His mind raced, 
Think, Tamura can only use his abilities if he touches something with all five fingers. Maybe if I could injure or break a finger, I could stop him from using his powers. But then I would have to break fingers on both sides and even doing one side would be dangerous enough. And even then Kirijiri might come to defend him and just make a portal to teleport the attacks away. Or he could close the portal around me and just cut me in half. But then Kirijiri has that metal thing so he probably has a body. And that metal is protecting his body. He didn't notice that he was rambling out loud. And Tamura and Kirijiri just stared at the boy like he had grown a third head. Smart kid. I didn't think he'd manage to understand our powers so quickly. Kirijiri mumbled. Tamura, kill the man. Sensei's voice rang out from somewhere, to which Tamura grinned. He walked towards the man, grabbing him and slowly turned him to dust in front of the shell-shocked Midori. No, stop it. Midori yelled desperately, trying to grab Tamura but was held back by Kirijiri. He shook, as the man completely disintegrated. I, I'm sorry. Midoriya trembled, his voice shaking. Tears started leaking out of his eyes as he fell to the ground, crying. Wordlessly, Kirijiri and Tamura left the room. What was the point in that? Kirijiri asked. Like you said, the kid is smart. Train him up just right and he'll be an unstoppable weapon with both intellect and power. If we have to, we can even boost him up with some quirks. But now, all we have to do is break that will of his. Sensei grinned. Yo, you're doing great. The boy next to Bakugu grinned, saw what happened on the news. You were awesome man. Bakugu merely grunted, staring blankly ahead. Yeah, aren't you happy? That quirkless idiot is finally gone. The boy who sat in front of him turned around and laughed, serves that idiot right. Bakugu growled. Midoriya's notebook was inside his bag, a reminder of his failure at being a friend, a hero. At everything, a pop was heard at the explosion and Bakugu's hands fizzled out. How dare you? Talk about Deku like that. He hissed, grabbing both boys by their collars. The only one who can talk shit about Deku is me, understood. I've known him the longest, and if there's one thing I know for certain, is that he won't give up to a bunch of stupid misty portals. So don't talk about him like he's dead, you dumb fuck. Bakugu, that's enough. The teacher grumbled as he walked into the classroom. Bakugu growled, but listened to his teacher, confusion swirling in his mind. Why? Why did you stand up for a bunch of idiots? Why didn't you stand up for Deku when he was being bullied by all of us? Is it because he's quirkless? That you thought he was useless and didn't deserve your protection? That brought him to another thought. Why did I start doing all that to Deku? Why did I start calling him Deku? We were best friends before. Before. I got my quirk. He did all he could to salvage whatever we had left between us. And all I did was hurt him. I forgot. I wanted to protect a Izuku. I wanted to be the one that was strong, to take charge of the others, to be the only one to hurt Deku so the others wouldn't hurt him too much. He regretted forgetting why he was even so mean to Midoriya. Bakugu was brought out of his thoughts as a hand smacked his head. He growled, watching the hand return to his teacher, who grumbled at him to pay attention. Tamura sighed. The new kid was troublesome. Sure, he learned quickly, picking up several fighting techniques within a few months. But it seemed like every single chance he got, he would spring a surprise attack. A right hook, a chokehold, a punch, all seemingly random attacks but if one looked closely, they could tell he was aiming for vital spots. If they hadn't already spotted it in the first two months, when the boy's actions were so obvious it was sickening, they would have been in big trouble. Midoriya was ridiculously strong at this point, though, to be fair, having constant death threats other unfortunate victims for not training was pretty good leverage against the kid. However, to be fair, Midoriya was probably perfectly capable of taking down hordes of grunts without as much as breaking a sweat. He had learnt really quickly by that Tamura meant and like, an hour how to walk without any sound, without giving anyone as much as a hint that he was there. Hell, he could just be an assassin and no one would even think it was him cause he was quirkless. In a society that wasn't that great to quirkless people, not having a quirk seemed to work out in some ways. That brought him to another point. Midoriya Izuku refused to hurt anyone, even at the cost of his own health. It happened way too many times. Tell him to smash a spider and he would look like you asked him to kick a puppy. Tell him to kill a person and he'd rather aim the gun at his own head. How little the boy valued his own life was rather worrying. At least to Kirijiri. Whatever had drove Midoriya into such a state, at such an age. Even with Midoriya's seemingly deteriorating mentality, it was surprising how resistant he was. He never really showed it. Besides those random sparring times when he would aim to break a few bones. But he refused to hurt anyone if he could help it. Even the brainwashing quirks that Sensei was using on him didn't seem to affect him much after constant usage of trying to force him to kill something. Speaking of which, Sensei wanted to get a new brainwashing quirk. He was gonna have to do some scouting soon. They even tried to break him by forcing him to only react to being called kid or brat. If he were to react to his real name, 
They would beat him up, try to suffocate him with rope, dunk him continuously in water or have Tamura just disintegrate his limbs. It did seem to be working, since Midoriya now constantly had this dead look in his eyes, but they could still see the fire burning in his eyes when you looked at him the right way. The way his eyes glinted was definitely terrifying, especially in the dark. It was not a look you would expect to see on a 14-year-old kid. As troublesome as he was though, Midoriya had his uses. He was incredibly smart, being able to analyze quirks, their overall strengths and weaknesses without so much as a glance. He even thought about letting Tamura wearing gloves with some of the finger parts cut off, so it looked like he was wearing a mix of finger and fingerless gloves. Said Parasan didn't really mind though. Now he could use all five fingers without worrying of having to disintegrate something, since he needed all five fingers on an object to do so. He was even really grateful because it made so many things so much easier. Because of his ability to learn and analyze so quickly, Midoriya was also able to easily pick up their fighting techniques and skills. Sure, he took time to actually learn how to do them proficiently, but he understood the basics really quickly. He also took a really short time to learn how to fight with weapons and was skilled with them. Though they made sure to never hand Midoriya anything sharp in case he tried to kill them in practices. They doubted he would actually do that, knowing he preferred to injure or knock them out instead of having to shed blood. But it didn't hurt to be too cautious. Sensei grinned. They forced Midoriya to go out with them, and they managed to corner a group of people. Five people to be exact. Tamura had forced Midoriya to fight them with threats on his life until they were all bruised and battered. As usual, once Tamura gave the killing command, Midoriya refused. He defiantly glared at both he and Kirijiri, refusing to take the knife that Tamura was handing to him. Kill him, or I'll kill the four others. Tamura merely grinned. Midoriya felt something in him snap, and everything went black. It was six months since Midoriya's disappearance. The Bakugus were a frequent visitor to the Midoriya household, usually having dinner with her as all of them tried to cope with Midoriya's disappearance. They had just left the house when there was a knock on the door. Inko opened the door cautiously. There stood Tashinori Yagi, a man who was working with the police to find her son. The uh, Tashinori-san. Nice to see you. Inko started, and Tashinori went right to the point. Your son, Izuku. Did. Did you find him? Inko yelled. We. Oui. Some people saw him. They were ambushed by a guy in a hoodie and a purple misty guy that seemed similar to the portal that took young Izuku. However, they also stated that there was another small boy with green hair with them. According to them, the guy in the hoodie threatened to kill the boy unless he beat them up, so he did so. He was ordered once again to kill them, but the boy had turned on the two people he was with and attacked them instead. Tashinori finished. Inko sighed. Her son was alright. He was alive. Then she started trembling. What kind of people had kidnapped him and forced him to fight and kill other people? Midoriya rubbed his head and he sat on the cold floor of his room. It wasn't much, literally. Just a cell that was barely large enough for the boy to lie down. He really did it this time, brat. Midoriya just looked blankly at Tamura, confused. He remembered being ordered to kill some people. And then Black. Let's just say we teleported you back here and you attacked every single living thing that was a villain in sight. Tamura grumbled. Midoriya was just even more confused. But he knew better than to speak up. Based on what Tamura said, he was already in enough trouble as it is. Tamura was getting a bit sick of this. The damned boy still listened to most orders, but refused to kill no matter what they said or did. He was hoping that Kirijiri had found new people with brainwashing quirks that they could borrow. The brat was so goddamned annoying. Shinsu groaned. He rubbed his head and took a look at his surroundings. He was sitting a small cell. His hands were cuffed together by some kind of handcuffs. He poked at it. It looked completely harmless though, so he ignored it for a while. He heard a cough, and he tensed up, turning in the direction of the sound. He noticed, in the cell beside his, was a boy with green hair. He was curled up in a ball, shoulder bleeding from what looked like a stab wound as he looked dead to the world. Shinsu only knew he wasn't dead because, one, he could see the boy breathing, and two, he had just coughed. Who, are you? Shinsu asked tentatively, if he could get the boy to reply. Maybe he could force more information out of him. I, name. The boy looked back at him with dead eyes, though clouded with confusion. He was wearing torn and tattered shirts and shorts, had a pair of similar cuffs on his hands and a collar around his neck. His dull green eyes seemed to glow in the dark and he looked tired as hell. Shinsu tried to access his quirk, but realized he couldn't. He stared at the handcuffs as if it was the perpetrator. It's quirk inhibition. The boy groaned as he sat up, staring at the wound on his shoulder before leaning against the wall behind him, huffing. From your reaction, I'm guessing you either have a brainwashing quirk or some quirk that allows you to force people to talk. The green-haired boy asked, turning to him slightly. Shinsu was taken aback at how the boy managed to form coherent sentences right after speaking gibberish. As for your question, honestly I'm not really sure myself. I know I have a name, but every time I try to think about it, my brain just feels like shutting off. They do call me kid and brat a lot, so I guess you can call me that. 
The boy replied. Shinsu shook his head. I won't call you that. But, my name's Shinsu Hitoshi. I have a brainwashing quirk that allows me to brainwash anyone when they reply me. Shinsu whispered the last part. He felt it was polite to introduce himself after the boy had tried to. But he didn't want anyone else to make fun of him for his villain quirk. Midoriya heard him though. That's a cool quirk. He coughed. Before continuing, you can just get a villain to walk into a prison cell. You'd make a great hero. Shinsu was taken aback. No one had even tried to hold a conversation with him before, let alone compliment his quirk. That's the first time everyone had said that to me. Midoriya just looked at the boy with sympathy. You got bullied and shunned because of it. Let me guess. They assumed you could be a villain and avoided talking to you. Shinsu nodded. There would only be one reason for the boy to know exactly what was going on, and that was if he had went through it himself. He asked, what quirk do you have then? And quirkless. It took two words for Shinsu to completely understand the gravity of the situation. Midoriya had it worse than he had. The quirkless were discriminated a lot worse than those with villain or useless quirks. Shinsu took the silence to think about he even got into this situation. His classmates had called him out again for his quirk, and he was walking home, alone, as usual. Then this guy had walked up to him, asking if he was okay. When he turned around to see who was talking to him, he was knocked out. Midoriya bolted up straight, gasping. Hey, Vi, are you okay? Shinsu leaned over, slipping his hands between the bars and trying to pat Midoriya awkwardly with his cuffed hands. SHH, Midoriya hissed, and Shinsu quickly retracted his hands, suddenly hearing footsteps echo in the darkness. Both brats are awake. A man with hands asked, Yep, we saw M moving on the monitors. Another man with purple flames and glowing yellow eyes replied, Get them to the training room. The hand man ordered, I, I'm sorry, Midoriya mumbled, turning to Shinsu with an even more dead look on his face as he was dragged out of his cell by the collar. Once there was a bit more light, a name clicked in Shinsu's mind, Midoriya Izuku, the kid who saved the other guy from that sludge monster and got kidnapped. God damn it. It didn't take long for them to come back and drag Shinsu to wherever they took Midori. All right, kid, Midoriya flinched, looking at the hand man in the eye. His cuffs were still on, as were Shinsu's. Shinsu just sat on the ground, bored. He couldn't escape anyway. Fight him, Tamura pointed at Shinsu. Shinsu's eyes widened. He was decently strong, because his quirk wasn't really helpful for one-to-one -one combat, but he didn't really want to fight Midori. The boy looked thin, too thin, and he didn't even know what the boy had been through before he was dumped here. What? No, Midori yelped, trying to get away from Tamura, but he was grabbed by the arm by the blue-haired man. Don't talk back. Didn't we teach you well enough? Tamura muttered, as he disintegrated the green-haired teen's arm. Midoriya didn't even make a sound, just watching as his skin slowly flaked off. Shinsu watched on in horror, though all you could tell was that he had widened his eyes. Sensei lent me his quirk for a while. Attack him. Tamura finally let go of Midoriya and ordered. Midoriya's eyes glazed over, and he shakily got to his feet, before launching himself at Shinsu. Are we good? Midnight asked over her earpiece. Yeah, we traced the kidnappings from all over the place. This area seems to be where the villains reside. Endeavor grumbled, Eraserhead, you good to go. Yeah, the pro hero mumbled, crouching at the top of a building, scanning the area for any signs of villains. Boy, Shota, show more enthusiasm. A loud voice blasted over the earpiece. Izashi, shut up. I already have dry eye. I don't need to be half deaf too. Aizawa grumbled back. Present Mike, shut up. Eraserhead, just get moving. Endeavor snapped. Present Mike whined. At the rate we're going, I'm going to be found because you're too loud. Aizawa rolled his eyes. He slipped his goggles over his eyes and jumped down into the alleyway, landing in a crouch before inspecting the area. Shinsu groaned. Even with cuffs on, Midoriya packed a heavy punch. He was just punched across the cheek by the green-haired kid and was sitting on the ground, trying to stand up. Wow, this kid isn't much. Shigaraki jeered. Tamura, we just caught him for his quirk, not for his fighting skills, Kurajiri said. But someone who can't fight is useless. Kid, kill him. Shigaraki growled. Midoriya advanced slowly towards Shinsu, before stopping. I, no. Midoriya snapped, turned around. I won't kill him. That's it. Kirajiri, get the others to stop him. Shigaraki ordered. You need to get out of here, fast. Midoriya whispered, grabbing the purple-haired boy and bashed his way out of a glass panel that led to another room. Just as quickly, he pressed a small sphere against Shinsu's cuffs and they fell off. Get out of here, now. Before they find us, Midoriya pushed the other boy out into the hallway just as more villains started to fill the area. I need to get out. Maybe get help, Shinsu thought, before he dashed through the hallway. Stop, kid. A man ordered. Shinsu stopped running and asked, Do you really think you can stop me? Of course I the man stopped. Good. Now, show me the way out. Fast Shinsu said. The man ran, and Shinsu followed. Now, was that really worth it? Letting him escape. 
Shigaraki laughed, picking up a piece of broken glass before stabbing the poor boy in the shoulder with it. Do whatever you want with him, just don't kill him. Yet, Shigaraki ordered, laughing as the villains that Kirajiri brought in cheered. Shinsu stopped, panting, as he reached a door. Walk back to where we came from, and then punch yourself in the face, Shinsu said. The man that had led him to the door spun around and walked back the way they came. Well, there's no turning back now. Shinsu pushed over the door and ran out, making sure to keep track of where he was running so he could retrace his steps. After turning a few corners, he ran into a man. OOF. He winced as he fell on his butt. Are you? Okay. The man with yellow goggles, a gray scarf and a black long-sleeved shirt and pants and what looked like to be a utility belt. I, my friend is there. He needs help. Shinsu panted, looking at the man who he had bumped into. Calm down. Who is in there? The man helped the boy up. I think. Midoriya Izuku. The green-haired kid that disappeared around ten months ago. Shinsu scratched his head. There were many people who disappeared, though none of them had green hair. Was Midoriya even his friend? But he had saved him so. Maybe. And a guy covered in hands and another guy with yellow eyes and a misty purple head. The misty purple head clicked in Aizawa's mind. The purple portal. Kid, do you remember where it is? He asked. Shinsu nodded. Yeah. All right. Hang on a second. Aizawa tapped his earpiece. Guys, come to my location, quickly and quietly. That last point it directed at you, Hazashi. Now, who are you? Aizawa asked the purple-haired boy. Who's the purple brat? Endeavor asked, pointing at Shinsu. Present Mike and Midnight were already there, and Aizawa had already called an ectoplasm and snipe, who happened to be nearby. An escapee. He mentioned seeing the Midoriya kid in there. I think that's our target. Aizawa said. Everyone was instantly all ears. We need to go now. Shinsu, do you mind leading? Shinsu shook his head, and Aizawa pushed Midnight at him. You stay near her? Okay. From what we know, her quirk wouldn't be very effective in a closed area, so she would be able to protect you. Let's go. The six pro heroes and one kid blasted into the warehouse where the villains were reciting, freeing prisoners left and right. It didn't take them much time to reach the area with Shigaraki and Kirajiri. What they say shocked them to the core. Midoriya was leaning against a wall in a corner, a knife lodged in his gut. He had blood running down from the multiple wounds on his chest and arms, and Aizawa was certain there was at least a few wounds on his back as well. What? How? Midnight wanted to rush in and help the green-haired boy, but she had to restrain the purple-haired boy she was supposed to be protecting from doing the exact same thing. Well now, look what you did. Shigaraki sneered, kicking the boy as he groaned. He opened his eyes a little, and coughed out some blood at the sight of the six heroes. You kept saying how heroes were going to save you. Shigaraki grinned as he pointed at the group. Brat, kill the heroes. Midoriya's eyes glazed, and he shakily stood up and pulled the knife out. It clattered to the ground and he stumbled, shaking himself free of the brainwashing. Well, go. Shigaraki growled. Midoriya shook his head, leaning against the wall panting heavily. Erg. God damn it kid. Attack them. Shigaraki hissed. Midoriya glanced at the heroes, stumbled a few steps before he broke into a full-out sprint towards the heroes. He's fast, Aizawa thought, as the kid raced towards him. He was certain the kid would be much faster if he wasn't currently bleeding out. He dodged and tossed his capture weapon at Midoriya. The cloth wrapped around Midoriya, but before a racer head could do anything, the boy yanked the weapon right out of his hands. Snipe aimed at Midoriya but he just dodged and launched the capture weapon at him. It wasn't as well thrown as a racer head did, but it did a good enough job to tangle the sniper up. Present Mike was at a loss. He didn't want to use his power, as he would probably end up making everyone else in the room deaf. Midnight was faced with the same dilemma, so they both just opted to protect Shinsu and keep him away from the chaos. And Devar was dealing with more villain fodder than Kirajiri kept teleporting in, with Ectoplasm still using his powers to clone himself and create chaos within the villain masses. Midoriya was busy trying to deal with Eraser Head and Snipe. Shinsu saw that Shigaraki was just standing in a corner watching the chaos unfold, so he decided to give it a shot. Maybe he could counter the villain's borrowed quirk with his own. Midoriya, he yelled. Midoriya didn't even spare him a glaze, still opting to fight with Eraser Head while dodging Snipes in frequent shots as he tried to avoid hitting his ally. Shinsu sighed. Welp, that didn't work. Han guy, fight me. Shinsu yelled. Midnight and present Mike just turned around and tried to shush the kid. You stupid brat. You Shigaraki didn't finish his statement as he fell under Shinsu's brainwashing. Shinsu groaned. Trying to brainwash anyone was tiring, especially since the other also seemed to have one. Stop your quirk. Shinsu ordered. Immediately, Midoriya stopped. He blinked, looking at a racer head. He looked around, his gaze lingering on Shinsu. A small grin formed on his face before he passed out. Aizawa caught him before he hit the ground. Shinsu also passed out because of the strain of using his quirk against another user, and Midnight caught him. God. Damn it. Kurajiri. Shigaraki growled. The purple portal appeared next to him. Next time. 
I won't be so lenient, heroes. Shigaraki hissed out as he stepped through the portal. The heroes had just finished beating the rest of the villains, with their leaders gone. The rest of the villains promptly lost their confidence and were easily beaten by the heroes. Aizawa activated his quirk on Midoriya, making sure that if this was some kind of logical ruse to make the man lower his guard, he would still be helpless. Aizawa was pretty sure that the boy had some sort of quirk that gave him extra durability against blood loss or some sort of speed quirk. Aizawa blinked. Usually, once he activated his quirk, he could feel some kind switch being flipped, deactivating the opponent's quirk. He could not find a switch. The boy was quirkless. I called for the police and an ambulance for the duo. Snipe said, how's the kid? Ectoplasm had already gone off with present Mike to see if there were any other prisoners. He has some minor injuries, but I think he mainly collapsed out of exhaustion. Present Mike said, carrying Shinsu. He wasn't that heavy, and Midnight suspected that he suffered from mild malnutrition. How's the other one? I, I don't know. Aizawa muttered. He had already performed basic first aid on Midoriya, but he had no idea how well he was doing. He already had very bad injuries before he had started leaping out like a monkey while fighting him. I have no idea how he managed to hold out for so long, let alone fight. Those injuries were bad. Aizawa mumbled. I managed to get some information on them. We need to look over them at the station. Ectoplasm said, holding a thumb drive in his hand. But, while waiting for the download, I saw something. Shocking. Well, spill. Present Mike yelled. Aizawa stopping his quirk just in time before he burst everyone's eardrum. Midoriya is quirkless. What? Snipe asked. No way. You saw how he leapt around like that. No way he's quirkless. He has to have some sort of premonition quirk. Agility quirk. I checked him already. He's quirkless. Aizawa muttered. Everyone stopped. Aizawa was the best person in determining whether anyone had a quirk or not. And if he said so, then it was true. The siren wailing in the distance brought them out of their thoughts. Come on. We'll talk later. Ectoplasm said. As Aizawa lifted the bandaged boy up, he almost stumbled, not expecting Midoriya to be so. White. I'm sorry. They got him. Shigaraki mumbled, as Sensei placed a hand on his head, taking the brainwashing quirk back. That's fine, at least you're alright, Sensei gently said, patting the younger on the shoulder. I have another mission for you. Find the Midoriya's house, and you know what to do. Shinsu opened his eyes, immediately closing them shut again at the bright lights that were right above him. Oh, uh, my eyes, he mumbled, trying to push himself up. Don't, you're injured, a familiar voice muttered. He peeked his eyes open, seeing a yellow cocoon sitting against a wall in the room. His hand was pushed down gently by another tall guy with a ridiculously tall, bright yellow hairstyle. What? Where am I? Shinsu asked. Hospital, you seem fine. Other than some cuts and bruises, an exhaustion caused partially from your insomnia and your kidnapping. The racer had grunted. Uh, no offense but, who are you? Shinsu asked, lightly smacking away present Mike's hand and pushing himself up. I. He was interrupted by a loud beeping. Everyone turned, seeing another boy in another bed next to Shinsu's. The green-haired boy bolted awake, jerking upright. He tore a bit of his stitches, and blood started to stain the bandages on his chest. Hey, calm down. Present Mike rushed over to the other bed, trying to calm the younger boy down. I, what? He blinked. He turned, taking in the three pro heroes in the room in confusion. His eyes widened as he finally realized who was with him in the room. I'm sorry. For fighting you. A racer head. He mumbled, breaking eye contact with the underground hero who just showed a face of mild surprise that someone knew about him. The racer head. Never heard of him. Shinsu mumbled. Midoriya froze, turning to face the purple-haired boy who was thinking. Shinsu, are you okay? Are you hurt? Midoriya was about to run over to Shinsu's bed before he was held back by recovery girl. Sit down. You're gonna hurt yourself again. You almost bled to death and you're asking about me. Care more about yourself. Shinsu grumbled. Midoriya just shrugged. I'm glad you're okay. Problem child. Aizawa muttered in his sleeping back. Oh yeah, you said he was a racer head. Shinsu pointed at Aizawa as recovery girl and did Midoriya's bandages. MHM. A racer head is an underground pro hero and his quirk is erasure and it allows him to erase other people's quirks by looking at them. The effect stops once he blinks and it makes his eyes glow red. He wears those yellow goggles so that his opponents don't know whose quirk is being erased. Shinsu just blinked at the word vomit that Midoriya was currently spewing out as Recovery Girl applied antiseptic to his wounds. Midoriya didn't even seem to notice, or if he did notice, he was doing a good job hiding it as he blabbed out every single thing he knew about Eraserhead, which was quite a decent amount considering the man was an underground pro hero. 
Is he a stalker? Present Mike pointed at him with a shaking finger and looking at Aizawa. I have no idea. Aizawa muttered, his mildly shocked expression still plastered on his face. Midoriya was still in the middle of saying something on how Aizawa preferred short one-on-one -on -one fights due to his quirk before he was interrupted by Midnight, Snipe, Ectoplasm, and Tashinori. I think Eraser has a fan. Midnight giggled. How much of that did you hear? Aizawa groaned, zipping his sleeping bag until only his face was seen. We heard how you were fighting this random guy once you had gotten your license, and that your quirk is disabled when you can't see anything. Then that random part your eyes glow and if you're in total darkness it might give away your location. And how you like to stick to the shadows and prefer to go after villains that are alone instead of in groups. Midnight counted off her fingers, smirking at the underground hero. I'm so sorry, Midoriya muttered, slightly embarrassed, before he saw Tashinori. You, do they know? Midoriya asked, tilting his head. Tashinori shook his head, indicating that they shouldn't say anything at the time being. Weren't you supposed to fetch Midoriya's mom? Ectoplasm asked Tashinori. I, I don't know. I called her just now to say I was going to pick her up and she sounded really happy over the phone. When I got to her house after around 20 minutes, I knocked, but she didn't reply. I, I feared the worse and barged into the house. Tashinori sighed. Midoriya was very tempted to grumble that All Might broke into his house. When Tashinori's next sentence made his blood run cold, she wasn't home. There was a phone on the ground with my number dialed and a pile of dust. Suddenly, Midoriya felt like he couldn't breathe. He hunched over, trembling, as he tried to get his bearings. Mom, no, no, no 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 no, no 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 no. He started gripping his arms so hard that his fingernails dug into his skin, drawing blood. Midoriya, Izuku, Shinsu called over, but the boy was still trapped in his own thoughts. Recovery girl ordered everyone to step away from Midoriya, to give him space to breathe. No, 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 they said they wouldn't hurt you. Midoriya mumbled, before he started unconsciously tearing at his bandages. Concerned, Shinsu got up, a bit wobbly after being stuck in a bed for so long, and made his way to Midoriya's bed. Kid, Midoriya promptly turned around and yelped. I a fog settled over his mind. Instead of being the harsh, suffocating fog that he was used to as he felt his body fall out of his control, it was calming, soothing. Stop picking your bandages. Breathe, Shinsu ordered. The distraught boy slowly stopped trembling, and his breathing slowly went back to normal. You're fine now. Shinsu released his quirk, and Midoriya muttered, It's not me. They said they wouldn't hurt her if I did what they said. Now I'm here and she's gone. He latched onto Shinsu, causing the boy to jump slightly. Not used to much human contact, or anyone relying on his for comfort, she's gone and it's all my fault. Shinsu put his arms around Midoriya to wrap him in an awkward hug. It took quite a bit of time for Midoriya to calm down enough to speak. His eyes were still red and puffy from crying, and he still hiccuped every now and then. There was a new person in the room, Detective Tsukachi. He had rushed in, saying he was caught in a traffic jam caused by some villain that Mountain Lady was dealing with. After introducing everyone and telling the detective why the boy had been crying, Tsukachi took out a folder and started to flip through it. Well, I don't really want to rush you if you don't feel up to it, but the faster we get things sorted out, the faster we can figure out what to do with you guys. Tsukachi sighed. I, I want to do this now. Midoriya replied, rubbing his eyes. He was still clutching Shinsu's arm for comfort and the taller boy couldn't bear to move away. Fine, what's your name? Tsukachi asked. Green eyes just blinked back at him. Ooh, Shinsu remembered what Midoriya has told him while they were both prisoners. Um, Midoriya, Midoriya replied, though it sounded more like a question than an answer. He figured that it was his name since Tashinori has mentioned it and it was definitely not Shinsu's mom, so it had to be his last name. What about your surname? Aizawa sighed. The boy might be suffering from memory loss if he couldn't remember his name. It was just mentioned two times in the past hour. Um, he tried to remember what Shinsu had called him during his panic attack. It was hazy but... Izuku, Midoriya. Izuku, Shinsu sighed. At least he got it now. All right. How old are you? Fourteen. Wait no. Fifteen. Midoriya mumbled. This may be a sensitive question, but... What did you do while you were with the League? The boy blinked at him. League? What League? Tsukachi resisted the urge to face bomb. Of course he didn't know they were called the League. The group that kidnapped you was called the League of Villains. They've been taking people left and right for quite some time and your kidnapping was the first that we ever got a lead. Tsukachi. Oh, they hit me. They also cut me a lot and threatened to dust me. Midoriya had to choke down a sob. They also wanted me to attack and kill people. His voice slowly became quiet. Am I going to jail? He let out a small whimper. Well, usually we would have to keep you around in case of any external influence. But based on what we saw yesterday, I think you're fine. Aizawa spoke up, finally getting out of his sleeping bag. 
Midoriya looked up in shock. But I was with villains and I hurt people and did you want to do any of that? Ectoplasm asked. No, of course not. I don't want to hurt anyone. Midoriya replied. According to multiple suspects and heroes, you refused to kill anyone, even when you were under the league's brainwashing. He's good to go. Sukachi gave a small smile. He suddenly took out his phone. Sorry guys, I've been called to interrogate another villain. I'll get going now. With a chorus of buys, Sukachi left the room. It took a few days for Midoriya to physically recover, with the help of Recovery Girl. Shinsu was already fine, but it didn't take much effort for the heroes to pull a few strings to allow Shinsu to stay with Midoriya. Seeing Midoriya was practically using Shinsu to anchor himself to reality. Shinsu didn't really mind. He didn't want to go home anyway. It was also arranged that Midoriya would be attending Shinsu's school. There was barely a month left until the end of the academic year, and they all agreed it would be better for Midoriya to be near Shinsu in case anything happened. Thankfully, Shinsu's school was near Midoriya's house, so it wouldn't be that much of a problem. Midoriya was, however, insistent that he remain in his home. Tashinori was going to object, but Midoriya had ended up word vomiting a few reasons, counter arguments and how they could be resolved that all sounded reasonable, so Tashinori had no choice but to accept. It was lonely. Midoriya missed everyone. The pro heroes, his mom, Shinsu, Kaken. Did Kaken even remember him? All right class, this is Midoriya Izuku. He will be joining us for the remainder of the school year. The teacher droned on about how to treat new students, and Midoriya was eventually allowed to take a seat next to Shinsu, right at the very front. Now, I will be giving you a small test. I have compiled everything we have learned over the year here, and I want to know where your weak points are, and I want to see how much you know, Midoriya. The teacher said, giving out the paper. Midoriya took a deep breath, and with some support from Shinsu, who gave him a thumbs up, he flipped open the paper. The teacher ended up standing in front of Midoriya's desk, looking at him as he stared into space in front of him, playing with his pencil. He asked, what are you doing? Uh, sensei, I'm already finished with the paper and I was bored and was thinking about stuff. He <laughs> he, Midoriya stammered, trying to look everywhere but at his teacher as he gestured wildly, clearly flustered at the attention. The teacher sighed, you should check your paper then instead of idly wasting your time. No doubt he was stuck with an idiotic student that clearly didn't know how to do the paper, he thought. I already checked it. Three times. The teacher was at a loss. The student knew what he was doing, at least. Sighing, he grabbed the paper off Midoriya's desk and proceeded to mark it. It wasn't until another 30 minutes later before the teacher proceeded to collect everyone else's papers, before dismissing them for lunch. Midoriya-kun, how did you think you'd do on the paper? The boy sitting behind him asked. Midoriya didn't even respond. He didn't seem to hear the boy asking the question. The boy sighed, clapping Midoriya on the shoulder. He didn't seem to care as Midoriya flinched at the sudden contact. Well, have some advice, newbie. That guy sitting beside you, he's trouble. He has a villain's quirk. Shinsu flinched. Yeah, every time something goes missing, it's always him. He can brainwash you if you just talk to him, so just avoid him. More and more people crowded around Midoriya, spewing out piles of nonsense of Shinsu's quirk. Shinsu didn't show it, opting to put up his uncaring facade. Midoriya knew about his quirk. Midoriya obviously thought the world of anyone's quirk, considering he didn't have one himself. Yet, he had clearly been the victim of bullying, and Shinsu didn't know how Midoriya would react. Midoriya raised his head, and Shinsu tensed up, ready for the worst. If he has a villain's quirk, then all of you also have villain's quirks. Shinsu looked up and faced the green-haired boy so quickly, his eyes took a few seconds to adjust. Midoriya didn't even speak that loudly. Yet the classroom was deathly silent. Everyone locked their gazes onto the small, new student, who had flinched from simple contact and was so easily flustered, yet didn't even seem phased now. Shinsu's quirk is awesome. Everyone's quirk is awesome. But it's what you decide to do with your quirk. That's what matters. His quirk isn't fancy like some of yours are, but it's useful. He can just tell a villain to surrender and walk into a cell, with absolutely no infrastructural damage whatsoever. Midoriya turned to face the rest of the students. So what? A student who finally managed to shake himself out of his stupor asked, It's an evil quirk regardless. Only villains use that kind of quirk. Have you ever heard of a brainwashing hero? Has Shinsu even used his quirk on you? Midoriya's stance was incredibly tense. If Shinsu didn't know better, he'd think that Midoriya was ready to beat his entire class black and blue. Let me tell you this, from personal experience. Shinsu used his quirk on me. There were barely audible gasps heard. I had a panic attack. And he helped me out of it. He, with his so-called villain quirk. I don't want to hear anything bad about Shinsu or his quirk anymore. Because clearly, you guys are just not using your brains to think anything through. Shinsu swore that Midoroya had growled out the last part. Need more food for thought. There's a person I knew with an explosion quirk. A pretty awesome quirk for a hero, huh? 
Midoriya didn't wait for anyone to respond. That guy told his childhood friend to jump off a building and kill themselves for being quirkless. Midoriya promptly got up from his seat, ignoring everyone else as he made his way over to Shinsu, dragging him out of the classroom. Come on, it's lunchtime. Shinsu was out in the hallways before he finally realized what had happened, letting out a confused what. Both boys sat on a bench in the canteen. After the stunt that Midoriya had pulled in the classroom, no one wanted to be anywhere near Shinsu or his brainwashed friend. Their entire table was void of people, and they could hear whispers from the other students around them. Midoriya was eating his sandwich, but Shinsu just stared at nothing at all. He didn't seem to want to eat anything, and clearly, having so many people talk about him behind his back was starting to stress the poor boy out. Shinsu looked like he wanted to say something, but he couldn't get it out. Luckily, Midoriya got the hint and suggested that they go eat at the field where there were less people. Why? Did you stand up for me back there? Shinsu asked, averting his gaze from the green-haired boy. Cause they're wrong about you. They're completely wrong about you. Midoriya replied, frowning. He thought Shinsu was already over this. They had this conversation before. Now no one would want to be your friend because of me. Because you're affiliated with me. And you already had it rough before. Shinsu started rubbing his neck subconsciously. I don't want to be friends with people like that. People who judge others like they're better than us. Midoriya grabbed Shinsu's hand. Look, I don't care what other people think of you or of me. I can handle them. I want you to stop letting what other people say get into your head. I Midoriya gasped, clutching his head. I'm not useless. I can help. I don't want them to hurt you. He started mumbling incoherently, trembling as self-deprecating words tumbled out of his mouth. Midoriya. Shinsu grabbed Midoriya and shook him slightly, but Midoriya didn't seem to register his actions and continued in his frenzied mumblings as he clutched his head harder. His quirk, however, considered Midoriya's words as a reply. Calm down. Breathe. It took a while, but eventually he managed to get the other to calm down. Thanks, Shinsu. The smaller boy sighed as he leaned against the other in his exhaustion. There was a brief pause before Shinsu said, Hitoshi. Huh? Shinsu let out a small smile. Call me Hitoshi. Midoriya grinned slightly. Call me Izuku. The whole class avoided Shinsu and Midoriya like the plague, but that didn't deter them from trying to reach their goals. With only a few weeks left until their exams, and the training they were doing to enter UAS Hero Course, neither of them could catch a break. They were very lucky though. Shinsu thought that Midoriya would have to catch up with a lot of the material that they had studied, since he was preoccupied through most of the school year, but it didn't seem so. Through the test their teacher had put them through, they had realized that Midoriya was either studying while he was in the league, or he was just really smart. He had gotten full marks on the test without any revision, and Shinsu had almost gotten full marks, just that he had apparently had marks deducted from his paper because he brainwashed the new kid and cheated. He had to restrain a very upset green-haired boy from marching up to the teacher and scolding him. Apparently, because both of them had bullying problems, they opted to stay in the library and study during breaks instead of interacting with their peers. Both of them were pretty much all set academically, but they had to start studying for UAS written test. They were also training, though they had some problems, since it was clear that Midoriya was on a whole new level of fighting than Shinsu was on. He lunged, punched, and kicked like a pro, each blow aimed to incapacitate anyone who dared to go against him. Shinsu, on the other hand, was probably just slightly stronger than an average teenager his age, and he had tried to learn several hand-to-hand -hand combat styles off the internet. Midoriya, having seen the boy practice, had decided that Shinsu trying to learn on his own wasn't good enough, and tried to teach the purple-haired boy as much as he could without pushing him too far. Midoriya also had way too many ideas for his quirk usage. If Aizawa hadn't practically confirmed that he was quirkless, Shinsu was willing to be that Midoriya's quirk was unlimited brain space or something. How the heck did he store so much information about everyone without getting a migraine? Midoriya had mumbled something about a voice changer to confuse his opponents, and was considering teaching Shinsu how to fight with a weapon so he didn't have to rely on his quirk all the time. Of course, Midoriya had to start tinkering with random scraps that he had found at the beach dump near his house as he committed the entire chapter of the history of the rules of quirk usage to memory. The two boys were also a lot closer, even though it was just a short amount of time. Midoriya treated Shinsu like an older brother, even though Shinsu was only older than Midoriya by only two weeks or so. It didn't really help that Shinsu was taller than the other by 10 centimeters, but neither of them really minded. Shinsu helped Midoriya whenever he had a panic attack and Midoriya just encouraged the older whenever he was feeling down because of his quirk. They originally were going to hang out at Shinsu's house and study, but seeing his less-than-ideal living situation, they opted to hang out at Midoriya's house instead. Shinsu's mom didn't really care about her son with a villain's quirk and his father was just straight-out verbally abusive. Shinsu dragged Midoriya before he could repeat what he did in the classroom with his parents. Midoriya liked having Shinsu come over, since it made his home seem a little bit more lively. 
Tashinori had visited them a few times, no doubt still guilty over Inko's death. Shinsu and Midoriya didn't mind. In fact, they bombarded the man with several questions about UAS entrance exams. Tashinori-san, can we use weapons in the UA practical? Midoriya asked. I'm not very sure. I can ask around for you, but I think it should be fine as long as they aren't dangerous. Tashinori replied, thinking, tell me how I'm dragged into this again. Shinsu asked as he pushed a tire. Midoriya was behind him, lugging a washing machine that had some engine on top of it. Well, you want to become strong, don't you, Hitoshi? Consider this training. Midoriya gave a small grin, picking something off the ground and pocketing it. What did you just do? A couple screws. I was missing a few of those for the voice modifier. Midoriya shrugged. As he went back to the washing machine, I bet I can crack this thing down for parts. It looks practically new. Shinsu rolled his eyes, before glaring at the tire. He was gonna move this damn thing. The duo worked in silence, until Midoriya asked, You think I can bring a flamethrower into the UA practical? No. Detective Tsukachi had made it a point to ask Midoriya questions slowly. He didn't want to overwhelm the boy. And while any other police officer could do it, and he doubted that Midoriya would lie to begin with, it was the best if the details of the situation were kept between those who knew. Shinsu hung out with Midoriya a lot, so they didn't have to worry about Shinsu when he was over for their daily study, training sessions. It began with small, easy questions, like, how were you kidnapped? And was there anyone you recognized there? Simple things. Midoriya, while he was shaking a bit, had recounted everything. Names, details, quirks, possible locations. Anything he could remember. The questions got tougher, more painful. Midoriya didn't want to remember. But what didn't kill you makes you stronger. Or so he thought. You what? Shinsu yelped. After Midoriya had recounted a particularly bad experience when he had tried to protect some random hostage that Shigaraki ordered him to kill and ended up with a stab in the back, literally. What? I didn't want to kill her. It's my fault in the first place for getting kidnapped. Midoriya grumbled. True. Why the heck is my quirk detecting that as a truth? Sukachi wondered, narrowing his eyes slightly. It wasn't like he asked to be kidnapped, or harmed, or brainwashed into hurting other people. How the heck is being kidnapped your fault? Shinsu demanded. Tashinori and Sukachi nodded in silent agreement. Because I'm quirkless. True. I was too weak to do anything. True. I couldn't even defend Kakin from the slime monster. True. If All Might hadn't intervened, Kakin would be dead. True. If I had gotten help earlier. Maybe Kakin wouldn't have suffered with the slime monster for so long. True. If it were anyone but me, I'm sure this whole thing wouldn't have happened. True. Contrary to what most people thought, Sukacha's quirk wasn't very accurate. It practically worked like a lie detector, taking in the person's heart rate and other symptoms to detect whether they were lying or not. And technically, if the person truly believed what they were saying, it would be detected as a truth, regardless if in reality it was true or not. If a person truly believed that it was February the 30th, then it would be detected as the truth, even though there's no such thing as February the 30th. And for the boy to believe completely that he was so useless, even though Tsukachi knew that he should never let his emotions get in the way of his work or get attached to anyone, he couldn't help but feel sad for him. How long was he shunned for being quirkless? How long has he been bullied? It seemed that it has been ingrained into his brain since the start, that he was useless, that he was just there and had no meaning in life. Shinsu and Midoriya were walking to the grocery store to stock up. Like it or not, neither knew how to use a stove with enough certainty that they won't burn down the apartment, so they were kind of living off instant noodles. They weren't that bad anyway. Hey, you think we'll ever see Deku again? Midoriya flinched. That quirkless loser. He should have died a long time ago. No idea how he even managed to make it to elementary school in the first place. That useless idiot. Shinsu wanted to snarl, but Midoriya grabbed his arm, clutching it like his life depended on it. Why to even bring it up? Nothing. Saw a green-haired kid walk past just now and was reminded of that useless fucker. Izuku, you okay? Shinsu whispered, supporting the boy. Like it or not, the boy was way too light for his own good. Midoriya nodded, gasping for breath. Well he was kidnapped, right? Probably dead for all we know. Good riddance. The trio of boys who were mocking Midoriya roared with laughter as they disappeared down the road. Come on, Izuku. Shinsu squatted, get on. Shakily, the smaller boy climbed onto Shinsu's back as the taller carried him back. You know, I wanted to give in to their brainwashing quirk. Shinsu looked at him like he was insane. Why Midoriya decided to bring it up, Shinsu didn't know. The bullies probably triggered it. My dad always said I was useless and a waste of space, but he was willing to wait and see what quirk I had to decide what to do with me. Like I was just something that he could check on every now and then to see if it's faulty. I hardly ever saw him, and the times I did, he would just spout some nonsense about me and mom. And when I was finally confirmed to be quirkless, he never replied my mom's text. She even tried to call him and realized that he had blocked her. Shinsu really wanted to find Midoriya's dad and punch him a few times. And my mom, 
She's the best person ever. But she never thought I was serious about being a hero. Once I was declared quirkless, and I asked her if it was possible for a quirkless person to be a hero, she hugged me and cried, said she was sorry, and I fully understand that but it felt like no one would support me. Shinsu fought the urge to spout a couple of swears. My classmates always treated me like I was nothing, something to bully, something to be stepped on. And once I told them I was quirkless, they spread rumors, like being quirkless was some kind of disease, like I had a choice in any of that. My best friend decided that he was too good to hang out with me. He always pushed me, shoved me around, and practically took charge of all my other classmates and hung it over my head that I was a useless, quirkless nobody. The teachers didn't care. They didn't care at all. I told them, they shrugged it off. Sure, take the side of everyone who hates the quirkless loser. Shinsu growled. He understood what Midoriya felt, but even the bullying had gone too far. He leaned over to comfort the smaller boy, who was close to tears as he continued to rant. He may not be able to help, but to see the boy that had practically saved his life and helped him though everything just suddenly break down like that for no reason, broke his heart. When I was with the League, I finally felt wanted. People accepted me even though I was quirkless. People that actually cared enough to try to train me, even though they wanted to use me for their own purposes. For once in my life I was seen as something better than the dirt beneath my feet. Midoriya wailed, curling up into a ball as he trembled. Wrapping an arm around the sobbing boy, Shinsu pulled the younger into a hug. I feel so bad that I think higher of the villains than my own friends. They treat you like shit, and yet you call them your friends. The two sat there, Shinsu trying to comfort Midoriya as he sobbed his heart out. It took some time before Midoriya could finally say something coherent. I don't want to be a villain Hitoshi. I know that. Since the incident, Midoriya had become even more introvert. He usually never spoke unless he overheard someone talking shit about Shinsu or about himself, theorizing about what quirk he had. Now, he never said anything. He did his homework right, spent all his free time in school reading with Shinsu, never saying a single word. The only times he spoke was when the teacher called on him to answer a question, and he spoke with such a monotone voice that it rivaled Eraserhead. It got worse when some people started thinking into the possibility that maybe Midoriya didn't even have a quirk in the first place. It started with Midoriya refusing to eat, then practically not sleeping in favor of training. Shinsu had caught him once when he had left some homework in Midoriya's house and had snuck over in the middle of the night to retrieve it, only to realize that the boy was lifting weights in his room. Shinsu practically had to brainwash Midoriya into eating and sleeping. He really hated to use it on the boy, who had suffered so much under the villain's quirks. It didn't help that Midoriya was partially resistant to brainwashing, and snapped out of it after eating a mouthful or two. Shinsu was getting worried about Midoriya. The teachers didn't really care either. Really, who wanted to side with the kid who had a villain's quirk and the kid who seemed to be a walking ghost? He really wanted to call Tashinori, but didn't want to bother the man any more than they did. It wasn't until they had any gym lessons, when the two boys finally shone. The class was playing dodgeball, Shinsu and Midoriya the only people on the same team. It was unfair. The teacher didn't care that most of the class were ganging up on the two teens, and allowed them to start. Even with the barrage of balls at them, the duo still dodged, their training deeply ingrained in their muscle memory. Even though Shinsu was hardly compared to Midoriya, who twisted and turned while in midair like he was performing some Parker dance, constant fists, and kicks to his face and ribs were very good motivators for learning to dodge. It wasn't until a particularly hard dodgeball smacked Shinsu in the face as he was dodging a few more balls, till something in Midoriya snapped. There was a glint in his eye. And as Shinsu staggered out of the court to treat his bloody nose and aching head, he managed to catch Midoriya throwing all the balls back at the other team viciously, knocking everyone else out of the game. Shinsu smiled softly as a small, victorious grin appeared on Midoriya's face. It was an understatement to say that the two boys had passed their exams with flying colors. They had also applied to UA, and were allowed to take the UA entrance exam. Midoriya's mental state had obviously improved by a lot. The only problem they had was that the entrance exam consisted of fighting robots and neither of them had any offense quirks. They were pretty sure that martial arts would not work on a robot unless they were baby-sized. Then Midoriya had an ingenious idea. If the robots were going to be faux villains, then they would be able to move. Anything that moved had joints. Joints meant that they couldn't put armor there or it would hinder the mobility of the robots. Toshinori had allowed the boys to bring weapons, but he would have to bring them to UA to make sure that they were perfectly safe and not rigged in any way. Midoriya was grinning from ear to ear as he passed the older man two metal bow staffs. He applied. Ectoplasm raised an eyebrow at Nensu. Yep, he scored very well on the primary exam. The principal exclaimed. He's trying to enter the heroics department. Huh. The racer had mumbled, glancing at the application. You know he won't be able to do much against the robots, right? No matter how smart he is, a racer had hated the entrance exam. 
Only those with physical quirks would be able to do anything. And that wasn't fair to the quirkless boy, who didn't even have a quirk. They're planning to enter the exam with sticks. Power loader snorted. Holding the two metal bow staffs in the air, Tashinori brought these over the other day. Said him and the brainwashing quirk kid wanted to use them. Anything special about them? Nope. Just a regular metal sticks. Power loader shook his head. If they even manage to survive without getting killed by the robots, I'll be impressed, let alone pass. To CH. Don't look down on him. Eraserhead grumbled. Awa, present Mike dropped an arm over the underground hero. You think they can make it? They will make it. The fact that they even asked about bringing weapons means that they have thought this through. A small grin appeared on Eraserhead's face, covered by his scarf. Show us what you're capable of, problem child. Ah, uh, I would be bad luck if you fell. The brown-haired girl grinned, helping Midoriya up on his feet. Thanks. Midoriya managed reply, as Shinsu mentally face-palmed. Midoriya was such a good fighter, yet he tripped over nothing on a daily basis. Come on now, we don't want to be late for the exam. Shinsu sighed, dragging the smaller boy into the examination hall. In time's up, listeners. Present Mike was grinning. Now if you would please head over the hall on the right, and I will be with you all in an hour. Heya, Shinsu caught up with Midoriya, who was waiting for him at the door. You think you did okay, Izuku? Yeah, I think I may have overwritten. Huh, Izuku mumbled, face turning red. The boy's hand had shot up in the middle of the test, asking for extra paper to write on. Everyone stared at the green-haired boy in shock, because each question required at least half a piece of paper's space to write. If it was just that, it wouldn't have been a problem. Shinsu had to swallow a laugh at everyone's reactions at how much paper Midoriya had asked for. Just after seeing the first question, Shinsu knew this was going to happen, if his notebooks were anything to go by. Question 1. What are the strengths and weaknesses of fire-based quirks? In the end, everyone was gaping at the boy who handed in at least extra 15 pages with his answers on it. Shouta, you have no idea how scary that was. Present Mike whined, dumping Midoriya's exam in front of everyone, as the underground hero raised his eyebrow in I told you so manner. He kept asking for more and more paper, and I looked at the questions and they were not easy. Yet he kept on writing and writing and writing. Wait, wasn't the paper like? Ten pages long. Midnight snatched the paper up, skimming through it. Holy, everyone turned to the female hero who was gaping at one of the pages. It so happened to be the one that was about her. Sleeping gas. Not useful in large crowds or working with others. Practically fights quirkless. She murmured, looking more and more impressed. The kid spot on. Even if he didn't make it into the hero course, he would have a good shot at general education. She flipped the page again and burst out laughing. This particular question was set, just to have some idea of how to possibly subdue Endeavor in case he got out of control. After all, his son had entered through recommendations, and strictly speaking, no one was really fond of the man who burnt anything just to catch a villain. This was one of the questions that was worth one mark, and it was just there to see how the kids might tackle it. With a lot of fire extinguishers was written on Midoriya's paper. Lucky, we're in the same arena, huh? Shinsu peered at Midoriya's paper that had the center number on it. Yeah, Midoriya was distracted by something, or rather, someone. Oh, it's that girl from earlier. Sadly, Midoriya wasn't able to thank her for helping him, since one hand landed on his shoulder, making him jump. Hey, don't bother other competitors. Can't you see she's trying to relax? The dark blue-haired boy said. Shinsu was about to retort, but Midoriya stopped him from doing so, trying to calm his beating heart. Oh yeah, listeners. Present Mike managed to grab the attention of the two as the blue-haired boy left. Your sticks are there. He handed the two metal weapons over and grinned. Go. There's no countdown in a real fight. See those two. Present Mike yelled at the other candidates before they rushed into the arena after one green-haired boy and one purple-haired boy who already had a large head start. It wasn't long before Midoriya and Shinsu encountered two three-pointers lurking around a corner. Target acquired. The robotic voice rasped out before rushing out at the duo before they even saw it. Here they go. Ectoplasm said, watching from the cameras, watching as the quirkless student and his friend rushed in, looking for robots. He's dead. Cementa sighed, as the robot rushed at Midoriya just as he had turned the corner. To their surprise, the boy used his momentum and slid under the attacking robot and jumped up behind it. He smashed his weapon right where the robot's head met the body, and the chunk of metal went flying off the metal body. Told you he knows what he's doing. The racer had mumbled. Both boys were doing fairly well. Midoriya was right, aiming at the glaring weaknesses the robots didn't seem to hide, though Midoriya was fairly disgusted at one of the other competitors, a short boy with purple orbs on his head that he could pull off. They were great for restraining the robots, but Midoriya could not stand his attitude. Out of the corner of his eye, he had seen the boy eyeing the girls around him, drooling and muttering things under his breath that he was sure he did not want to hear. Then he'd see him accidentally stick a black-haired girl to the ground. 
Instead of apologizing and helping her out of his quirk, he advanced like some crazy person as the girl shrieked to leave her alone. Hey, back off, Midoriya growled, a few meters away from the commotion. What's it to you? Focus on your trial. The boy had shouted back. It sounded like encouragement, but from what Midoriya had seen, he just wanted him to back off and let him do what he wanted. Midoriya grabbed him and dragged him into a building before he exited and slammed the door shut. Why'd you do that? You know the rules said not to assault other competitors. The girl sighed as she tried to pry herself from the orbs, only to get more stuck. Well, you needed help from the pervert, Midoriya mumbled, trying several ways to free the girl without getting stuck himself. Go, I don't want to hinder you. The girl grinned, good luck. I'm not gonna let you stay stuck here, Midoriya said. I don't even have a useful offensive quirk. I can alter the size of stuff, and it's not even that useful for a fight. A small thing doesn't damage anything, and a large thing is too heavy for me to throw. Can you enlarge your shirt and get out of it? Aye. But, she turned red, face heating up. Midoriya had already taken off his shirt, revealing the thin undershirt he wore beneath it. Here, have mine. Call me when you're doing changing. I'll take watch. After the girl had managed to regain her freedom, she profusely thanked Midoriya, before they parted ways to continue with the test. You know, maybe if you can get in close, you can shrink some of the robot's parts so they will topple over, or climb a building and use your quirk at the last minute to enlarge rocks to smash the robots. Thank you, the girl yelled as she ran off in a different direction. He found some wooden planks on the ground, and with the chalk he had found, began writing on the planks before displaying it clearly to a camera that was hidden on the roof of a building. Is that even allowed? Power Loader asked. We did say you can't attack other examinees. He did save another student from harm. That kid has records of being a complete pervert with no respect for girls and would often look at them and say stuff. Midnight mumbled, looking at the records of one Mita Minoru. Plus, he even helped her out of her situation. I support it. Crap. He found us. Cementos sighed, seeing Midoriya hold up the sign. How did he even see the camera? Nedzu laughed. This kid was so much fun. Why was the pervert allowed to even enter this school? Nedzu slammed his paw onto a big, red button. Izuku, what on earth are you doing? Shinsu grumbled. He found Midoriya holding up a wooden plank. Can't find any more robots. Midoriya grumbled, and I had to save a girl from a pervert. Shinsu blinked. Okay. Two minutes left. They had ended up on the main road, where most of the other competitors were at. They probably ran out of robots to destroy. It was then, the ground rumbled. An earthquake. Someone cried out. A shadow loomed over everyone. No, run, someone yelped, as a zero-pointer made its way destroying everything in its path. Oa, Midoriya was about to run, when he heard a whimper of pain. Whirling around, he found the girl that had helped him earlier, sprawled on the ground, a large piece of concrete pinning her to the ground that was probably dislodged by the robot's heavy footsteps. Hitoshi, Midoriya yelled, rushing to help her. Shinsu followed suit. They realized they had an even worse problem. She not only had a concrete block weighing her down, but it also twisted her ankle and the zero-pointer was closing in fast. Hitoshi, get her out of here. I'll deal with the robot. Midoriya yelled, excuse me, but you have some kind of gravity quirk, right? Is it too much of a bother to lift me up and deposit me on top of the robot? W what? Are you crazy? She yelped in pain. This thing's slow enough and can only cause damage to the area around it. There's a bunch of wires in every robot located at the neck area. If I can get there, I can stop it. Midoriya replied. Please, just do what he asked, Shinsu sighed. With or without your help, he's gonna do it anyway. Fine. The girl huffed, patting Midoriya and he floated upwards. She held her hands together, ready to drop the boy at the right place. All right, hold on, Shinsu grunted, using his staff as a lever to get the block off her. He was almost at the robot's head when Shinsu accidentally shifted the block in the wrong way. She hissed in pain as the concrete shifted, pain searing through her leg as she accidentally brought her fingers back together, disabling her quirk. Shit. She looked up, only to see the boy fall. Izuku. Shinsu yelled. One minute left. Everyone else who was a safe distance from them watched, as the boy fell. Izuku twisted himself in midair, somehow managing to land on the arm of the robot. Everyone sighed in relief. He grabbed onto the metal, and proceeded to climb his way up the rest of the way. It wasn't that different from climbing around in the trash heap. Just less footholds. And it was a lot higher. No biggie. He grabbed the small piece of metal he had stored in his pocket easily slicing through the rubber on the neck of the robot, revealing a handful of multicolored wires. The robot's center of gravity was behind the legs. If it stopped, it would definitely fall backwards. If it did, then only he would be injured and everyone else would be fine. Well, you know what to do. He slashed through them. The robot shuddered, coming to a halt. Midoriya carefully clambered out of the neck area, seeing Shinsu helping the limping girl walk away. And time's up. Present Mike's voice echoed throughout the arena. 
Other students, including the blue-haired guy with engines on his legs, came in to help Shinsu carry the girl. A loud creak echoed from within the robot, and Midoriya could feel the robot's center of gravity shift. Crap, we need to get him out of there. Midnight yelled, grabbing a racer head. But Nezu still kept smiling and said, Don't worry, I have a hunch. Plus, Mike is there so he can help out if he needed to. A hunch. What if you're wrong? You're putting a teenager's life at stake for a hunch. Midnight hissed, and what do you think he can do? Yell at the robot. All Might also left the room a while ago. Nezu continued, a smile still plastered on his furry face. Midnight sighed. At least, All Might made a lot more sense than present Mike in dealing with that situation. The robot, someone shrieked, as the rest of the examinees backed away. Wait, he's still in there. The girl, who he had just found out whose name was Yuraraka, yelled, straining against Shinsu's grip. From all the smoke that was spewing from the robot, they could barely see a small figure poke his head out. God damn it. Midoriya grumbled. He took a brief look at his surroundings, before he sighed. He jumped off the robot's neck and ran along the arm that was still in contact with a building. If he could make it, the entire robot creaked again and Midoriya increased his pace. He felt a slight tremor, and in a moment of instinct, he jumped, just as the metal beneath him gave way. Using his arms to soften the blow, he tucked into a ball and rolled once he landed on the roof. Midoriya rubbed his head, before stumbling to the edge of the three-story building. He could only look as everyone stared at the robot heap in shock. No, why? He saved me. Yuraraka was close to bursting to tears, and Midoriya decided that he didn't want to see waterworks today and yelled, Hey, I'm fine. Everyone looked in his direction, and Midoriya just gave them a thumbs up. You idiot with your stupid sense of martyrdom. Get down here so I can scold you, dumbass. Shinsu growled, with a smile that definitely did not suit the situation at hand. Midoriya grinned. Safely, Shinsu roared, a second too late as Midoriya had already jumped off the building, landing on the ground with a crouch. Shinsu sighed, as Recovery Girl appeared, to take care of Yuraka. This is going to give him a headache. You idiot, are you trying to kill yourself? I'm not. I was trying to save you guys. There are other ways to save us that do not include scaling a three-story high building, like maybe helping me carry her. I had no idea how much time we had left. We wouldn't have made it. You could have killed all of you with your stunt. I got full marks for physics. I know where the center of gravity of the robot was, and specifically stopped the robot there and then so that nobody would get hurt. I'm pretty sure your definition of nobody does not include yourself. Everyone was just staring at the arguing duo. Yuraka already had her leg healed by Recovery Girl, and everyone one was also fixed up. All she had to do was check on the two boys who were still having their very heated discussion. Everyone is safe. You could have been crushed by the robot. I've gone through worse. Instead of fearing for the boy's life, everyone was now fearing the boy himself. After all, who casually just says that they've been through worse than being crushed to death by large metal shrapnel? Shinsu and Midoriya glared at each other, neither of them saying a word. Sighing, Recovery Girl interjected, So, do either of you have any injuries? That was crazy. Power Loader blinked. That kid is either a mad genius or just insane. The racer head was close to sighing. Even if Midoriya and Shinsu hadn't passed, he would have asked Nezu to write a letter to invite them to UA. Not necessarily the hero course, but someone needed to keep an eye on the two. One of them was crazy, and apparently also had no sense of self-preservation, but both of them were the ones that had put a temporary hold to the League of Villains. They were bound to be back to get some sort of revenge, or recruit them somehow. Someone had to keep an eye on the problem children. Midoriya was honestly scared he wouldn't get into UA. Not after what he did to the purple pervert. He didn't regret what he did, but it went against one of the few instructions they were expected to follow. Shinsu, he was sure he would be able to get it. They both had taken out their fair share of the villain bots, and were pretty sure they had done decently on the tests. Now, it was just a waiting game. Not wanting to waste any time, the duo went back to clearing the beach as training, not knowing that a certain yellow-haired individual had been watching them and was there waiting for them. No, All Might was surprised at Midoriya's response, and Shinsu cackled at the bewildered expression on All Might's face. You're a great hero, that's for sure, and you have an awesome quirk. But, I've been pushed away and shunned for so long for not having a quirk. I don't want to be accepted just because I suddenly gained a quirk. I want to be somebody for being me. I want to know that I don't just mean something to the villains. Midoriya looked All Might in the eye. You better choose a good successor. I'll be damned if your quirk ended up in their hands. All Might laughed. Of course, my boy. Both of them had gotten letters. Shinsu's letter was fairly normal. Blah blah blah. He did well on the exam and the practical. Blah blah blah. He was accepted into UAS Hero Course. It was time for Midoriya to open his letter. Hello, I came to this town to teach in UA. You scored excellently in the written exam, and you did manage to get a lot of villain points. However, as you know, while you didn't directly assault anyone, you did lock an examinee up. But take a look at this video. 
The television in the holographic message showed a black-haired girl walking into a room. Who's that? The person you saved from the pervert. Shinsu asked. Yeah, excuse me dot 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 um dot 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 the green-haired boy with freckles and curly hair. The one that took down that giant robot. Do you know what I'm talking about? She asked present Mike, who nodded. I'm sure you guys saw that he had locked the purple-haired boy up. And I know that you specifically said not to attack any other examinees. And he was risking admission into UA. And he didn't have to do it. But he saved me. The purple guy had stuck me to a wall. And I had no idea what he was thinking of doing to me. But, the green-haired boy. He helped me get out of the sticky stuff I was stuck to the wall with. And gave me his shirt so I could continue on in the exam. He also gave me pointers on how to use my quirk to take out more robots. So please, if his chance of getting rejected from UA was because of that, then I beg you to reconsider. If he didn't get enough points to enter, I would also want to give him some of my points. Please. Damn, Izuku, you were right about the pervert. Shinsu raised an eyebrow. You didn't believe me before. Midoriya retorted. Even if you asked, you can't give points to anyone. But there's no need for that anyway, little listener. Present Mike had pat the girl on her head. You spurred on others to act. Some teachers weren't very happy about what you did. But we did manage to pull up record of the boy to give you a valid reason for your actions. This girl coming to speak on your behalf just cemented it. For rescuing several of your fellow examinees, you were also rewarded with several rescue points. After all, heroes don't just defeat villains, but also protect the people. We also heard about your attempt to stop the Zero Pointer, and while it was reckless, it was also a rather well-thought-out plan. 35 villain points, and another 80 rescue points. A total of 115 points. So come, join us at UA. This is your Hero Academy. Shinsu and Midoriya blinked at the hologram shut itself off. Well that sure was dramatic. Shinsu sighed. He should have just said that at the beginning. The first day of school was. Interesting. Midoriya and Shinsu were trying to find their classroom. Only to be pulled aside by a racer head. Well, I see you two problem children made it. The racer head sighed. Hi, I'm still. Sorry for trying to. You know. Attack you. Midoriya mumbled. Don't call me by my hero name in school. My name is Aizawa Shouta. Aizawa grumbled. Also. Not hard feelings about you attacking me. Wasn't really your fault, per se. Um, Aizawa-sensei, do you have any idea where the Wana classroom is? Shinsu asked. We've spent like 10 minutes wandering around. Hey, turn a corner, walk through the hallway, then turn at the second corner. There should be a row of classrooms and you should be able to find it. Aizawa replied. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei. Midoriya gave a small smile before Shinsu dragged him out. 1A, here it is. Shinsu was about to enter the classroom when he heard a familiar voice. Don't put your feet on the table. It's very disrespectful to your senpai who used these tables before and the people who made them. Like I care. What high school did you go to, you extra? Kakin, Shinsu and Midoriya carefully opened the door so as to not attract any attention. Stop calling people extras, a red-haired boy with sharp teeth tried to say. And a pink-haired girl with yellow horns. Agreed, yeah. That's rude. We have names you know. The blue-haired boy who Midoriya had interacted with at the entrance exam side. I attended Sumi Private Academy. My name's Itatenya. Sumi, so you're a damn elite. Bakugu roared back. Looks like I'll have fun crushing you. What's his problem? A girl with seemingly long earlobes asked, turning to the black-haired boy behind her. No idea. He's been this rude since I entered the classroom. The red and white-haired boy sitting in the back was just staring at Bakugu in distaste. Midoriya couldn't figure out whether it was a burn or a scald that caused the scar on his face. There was a floating uniform in front of Bakugu. Midoriya was fairly sure the person had an invisibility quirk. Oh, it's you too. A voice rang out along the hallways. And in his shock, Shinsu yanked open the door, revealing him and Midoriya to the rest of the class. Hiroraka ran up to them, smiling. Hey, you guys saved my life. Thank you very much. She bowed. Uh, it's no big deal. Haha. Uh -huh. Midoriya rubbed his head sheepishly, while Shinsu rolled his eyes and half-heartedly scoffed at Midori. Deku, everyone turned to look at the blonde who instead of having his regular raging, cocky expression on his face, had one of utter shock. Kakin, Midoriya dryly regarded the other boy. He was glad that Bakugu still remembered him, but was still slightly bitter that his friend was one of the few people that made him feel like crap. You're alive. Bakugu lunged out of his seat, and Midoriya flinched as he came up to him and placed his hands on his shoulders. Oi, leave him alone. Shinsu mumbled, seeing as Midoriya wasn't injured in any way. Bakugu seemed to lightly grab Midoriya's shoulders, as if trying to check if he was really there, in the flesh. You, you better not disappear again, you nerd. Bakugu managed to growl out, averting his eyes and not looking at Midoriya in the eyes. And I'm fucking sorry for how I fucking treated you in the past. Shinsu was taken aback. Midoriya had told him about Bakugu's behavior and characteristics. 
but he never expected that he would swallow his pride to apologize, even if it was still rough around the edges. I, I forgive you, Midoriya began, but I can't forget how I was treated in the past. Bakugo released Midoriya. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna do my fucking best to make it up to you. Seeing as everyone's eyes were on him, Bakugo turned around and growled, What are you fucking extras looking at? The pink-skinned girl laughed. It's funny how one minute you're calm and the next you're spouting profanities like there's no tomorrow. Bakugo clicked his tongue before returning to his seat. The girl came up to them. Ashido Mina. Nice to meet ya. Kirishima Ijiro. The sharp-toothed redhead grinned. Midoriya and Shinsu introduced themselves. Before taking their seats in Bakugo's column, Midoriya sitting in front of Shinsu. Ada stormed in Midoriya's direction. I am from Sumi Private Academy and nice to meet ya, Ida-kun. Midoriya greeted. I heard your name from just now. Midoriya, I misjudged you. I honestly thought you were just someone who didn't know better who was trying to apply to UA. But seeing how bravely you took on the zero pointer made me realize that I was wrong. It bowed as he spoke, so he didn't see Midoriya flinch at the mention of his name. Everyone just thought he didn't expect Ida to bow, though. Hey it's okay. We can still be friends. Right, Midoriya shakily said. After what had happened before, Midoriya was scared to trust other people, lest they abandon him when they hear of his secret, of his obvious glaring weakness or being quirkless. Go somewhere else to play at being friends. This is the hero course. A voice spoke up from the door. Everyone turned to look in that direction. Shinsu and Midoriya internally laughing at seeing the underground hero once again wrapped up in his sleeping bag. Aizawa took a large sip from his juice pouch, before standing up and getting out of the sleeping bag. Took you all eight seconds to quiet down. You need to be more rational. I'm Aizawa Shouta, your homeroom teacher. Get changed and meet me at the field. The underground hero droned on, before pulling out 20 gym uniforms out of his sleeping bag and no one had any idea how they all fit in there. Then, the mad rush to the field began. Aizawa Sensei, what do you want, Bakugu? Bakugu took a deep breath. As our teacher, you know that uh, Midoriya is quirkless, right? Yeah, make it quick, the others are coming soon. Please don't mention anything about it to the rest of the class. Bakugu said, Midoriya had it rough before because everyone. It was partially my fault, and everyone was mean to him because of it. I, I don't want him to lose the chance to make friends because of this. Aizawa grunted, I have no intention of doing so. A quirk assessment test, everyone exclaimed, save for Shinsu and Midoriya. They were kind of expecting that from Aizawa. Some of the students lamented about not having an entrance ceremony or orientation, but Aizawa merely said they were a waste of time and that he needed to see what they were capable using their quirks. In junior high, you guys weren't allowed to use your quirks for you gym results. Bakugu, what was your best result for the softball throw? Bakugu replied with a 67 meters, and Aizawa ordered him to use his quirk. Bakugu gleefully took the softball from their homeroom teacher, and with a cry of die, had launched the ball into the air, powered by an explosion. The ball flew 705. 3 meters. Then, because someone said it looked fun, Aizawa threatened to expel the person who came in last in all eight tests, deeming them as having no potential. Bakugo had learned Sleepyhead's name was Shinsu Hitoshi, and while he was still inclined to give him a stupid nickname, he had decided to call him by his given name. Given everything that had transpired, and how much shit he probably had to help Midoriya through, he probably deserved it. Plus, he had to make up for the shit he put Midoriya through. And if there was one thing that Bakugo wasn't expecting from Midoriya, it was how strong he was. Sure, Bakugu had noticed he had developed more muscles, but that was it. Midoriya had always been on the scrawny side, and was still so skinny you would think he was collapse in a heap if you asked him to carry a few heavy boxes. It wasn't the case. It was far from that. Midoriya took 5, 30 seconds for the 50-meter dash, faster than the frog girl and the laser guy. Hell, he was even grumbling that he could go much faster if the track wasn't so short. Grip test. Midoriya didn't do that well in that. He had gotten a 80 kilograms for it. It wasn't that good, considering the octopus dude had a 540 kilogram score, but Midori wasn't as bad as Bakugu had thought. Standing long jump, most of them, like Laser Guy and Frog Girl, and himself, were easily able to clear the entire long jump. Midoriya, who was quirkless, had managed to get an impressive 3. 5 meter jump in, repeated sidesteps. Bakugu himself did rather decently for it, using his explosions to propel himself left and right. The stockier built students, like that octopus dude in glasses were clearly having problems, but Midoriya did rather decently. Ball throw. There was that girl who just erased the gravity of the ball and got an infinity. Like that was any helpful for determining how strong anyone was. He himself had gotten a 705. 3 meters, and he was curious how far Midoriya could throw. Midoriya had started at the edge of the circle, before taking a few running steps and flung the ball in the air. The ball flew an impressive 115 meters. Bakugu was close to gawking, 
sit-ups. It was clear that everyone thought that the people like Octopus Guy and the other plain-looking guy with brown hair would do well. It turned out that Elbows had an advantage, using his tape so he didn't just have to use his core muscles but also his arm muscles. But even he had stopped after 93 sit-ups. Then it was Midoriya's turn, with Shinsu helping him hold his feet down. A minute and a half later, everyone was just staring at him. Midoriya didn't even seem close to being tired out. Hell, he had finished around 100 and still wasn't done. He eventually stopped at 147. Seated toe touches. Midoriya could easily lean forward all the way. And his fingertips went past his toes to the point where he just looked like you took a piece of paper and folded it in half. And finally, the long distance run. It wasn't even funny anymore. The creation girl had created a scooter of all things and was leisurely overtaking everyone. That wasn't weird. What was ridiculous was that Midoriya was keeping pace with the scooter and still being able to follow as the girl went round after round after round. Midoriya was truly a monster. Aizawa eventually had to stop them because they were running out of time. But Ajiro had accidentally hit him with his tail. And while Midoriya has managed to avoid falling on his face, he had scrapped his palms and sprained his ankle. After having Ida, Yuraka and Shinsu fussing over him and making sure he had no life-threatening injuries and that he was perfectly fine, Shinsu helped him up and Aizawa gave them the overall placing. 1. Izuku Midoriya 2 Rikido Sato 3 Siyu Asui 4 Bakugu Katsuki 5 Tenya Ida 6 Shoto Todoroki 7 Hanta Siro 8 Mizo Shoji 9 Mashurawa Jiro 10 Aijiro Kirishima 11 Mina Ashido 12 Achako Yuraka 13 Itoshi Shinsu 14 Koji Kota 15, Yuga Ayama 16, Momo Yeyarazu 17, Fumikage Takoyami 18, Denki Kaminari 19, Kayoka Gyro 20. Toru Hagakira it wasn't that surprising, considering that Midoriya had gotten first for sit-ups. Seated toe touches and even was tied first with Creation Girl, and he also did decently well for the others. What was surprising was that even in tests where one could use quirks, it was the quirkless Midoriya Izuku that had gotten first. It made sense, considering that while some excelled at some and just terribly failed at others, Midoriya seemed to always be in the top 10 of the class no matter what. It just sounded weird, and Bakugou couldn't help but feel oddly proud of Midoriya. That didn't mean he would say it out loud, because that would mean he would have to admit Midoriya was better than him. No way, Shinsu also wasn't that bad, having gotten 13th. Bakugou wasn't worried about him being expelling, definitely not. He just didn't want Midoriya to lose his friend, especially since he never seemed to have one because of Bakugou. Plus, he didn't even seem to use his quirk in the tests, and wasn't that weak. That also left Bakugou with more questions than ever. He couldn't figure out what Shinsu's quirk was. He didn't have anything that would reveal what it possibly could be, like octopus dude, earphone jacks and elbows. But he didn't seem to even use his quirk throughout the entire exercise, like the creation girl or gravity kid, the way the invisible girl's uniform was slouched. It was obvious what she was thinking. Aizawa sensei. A voice pipped up, before Aizawa was about to say anything. Yes, Midoriya, this may sound rude, but please don't expel hagakure san Midoriya said, it is obvious that some quirks are better suited for several situations, and some aren't. Just because her quirk isn't suited for physical tests doesn't mean she has no potential, says the person who didn't use a quirk at all and got first overall. Aren't you being a little hypocritical? Aizawa demanded, his tone suggesting that he would not hesitate to expel Midoriya if he had to. Bakugou's respect for the man shot up. Aizawa had specifically phrased it in a way that suggested to those who did not know that Midoriya was quirkless would assume he has a non-physical quirk, while not outrightly saying that Midoriya had a quirk, so he technically wasn't lying to his students. No one would insinuate that Midoriya was quirkless. Midoriya took a deep breath. I trained to get to where I am. I'm sure with enough training, everyone could get stronger. Plus, if everyone is all strong and good, someone's bound to get last place. So please don't expel her. Midoriya clearly was attempting a bow, before Shinsu stopped him, saying, Don't put pressure on that foot, you idiot. Aizawa sighed. Looking at the upper limit of your quirks and the room for improvement in each result, it becomes clear what you can and cannot do. Aizawa glanced at Midoriya and Shinsu briefly, before returning to address the rest of the class. And about that expulsion thing. The invisible girls had perked up when Midoriya defended her, but only slouched down even lower. It was a logical ruse to draw out the best of your abilities. I only expel students with no potential. Midoriya also brought up very good points. The teacher gave the weirdest smile ever, as if he was having fun playing around with his students' emotions. He didn't notice, though, that both times Midoriya flinched at the mention of his name, since everyone else was jumping and screeching at the teacher for lying. Shinsu both sighed and facepalmed, which only served to widen the teacher's grin before he dismissed them and handed a piece of paper to Midoriya to see Recovery Girl, saying to rest and be prepared for more vigorous tests the next day. 
Both he and Midoriya knew that Aizawa would do something like that. Hey man, that was super manly. Hiroshima smacked Midoriya lightly on the back. The green-haired boy flinching before the scared expression on his face was replaced with one of shock. Huh. Boy, don't do that, he'll fall. Shinsu grumbled, steadying Midoriya as he helped him to the nurse's office. Yeah, you did so well in the test and even stood up for me. Thank you. The invisible girl jumped about and bowed at Midoriya. It's no problem. I just did what I thought was right. And I believe you have a very strong quirk. I mean, if you aim at the pressure points of a very strong person, and they can't see you, then you can take them out very easily. And Midoriya was about to ramble on before Shinsu rolled his eyes and interrupted him. Izuku, you're gonna scare them away with your rambling. Izuku turned red, before saying, I'm so sorry. It's a very bad habit of mine and I tend to do that for some reason and this time he stopped because he had walked into Bakugu. Just lightly pushed him away. Deku, you idiot. Watch where you're going, dumbass. You're still awesome, dude. I wonder what quirk you have. Neither of you have used your quirks and you don't have any like. Extra limbs of anything. Siro chimed in. I'm sorry for tripping you. Ajiro apologized. I heard the scooter and moved to avoid it but I didn't realize you were running on the other side. A small look of resentment flashed across Midoriya's face. Before he sighed, it's fine. I'm sorry. Ajiro looked a bit down and nervous at Midoriya's expression. No really, it's fine. I just got tripped a lot in school so. Midoriya didn't need to continue for everyone to understand what he meant. No one knew how to respond, and Shinsu took the opportunity to escape to the nurse's office with Midoriya. Phew, I'm glad I can walk again. Midoriya sighed, walking home. Shinsu was tapping on his phone, texting his mother that he would be back late, again. A hand landed on Midoriya's shoulder, and Midoriya whirled around in shock, accidentally smacking Ida's arm away and knocking him to the ground. Uh, Ida, I'm so sorry. Midoriya apologized, while Shinsu helped the taller boy up. No worries, I must have startled you. Is your ankle healed? Yeah, I'm fine now. Ida just joined the two boys in walking to the station, deep in thought. I was really taken in by Aizawa-sensei. I even thought this is the best of the best and such. I didn't think the teacher would encourage us with a lie. Honestly, it was so obvious that he would pull something like that. Threatening us would push us to out limits. Shinsu mentioned. Hey, you guys. A voice came up from behind them. They turned around, seeing Yuraka running up to them, going to the station. Wait for me. You're the infinity girl. Ada spoke up, and Yuraka introduced herself yet again. Ooh, you're Tenya Ida right. And you're Hitoshi Shinsu and Deku Midori you're right. Hey, I, my real name is, Izuku, but Kakin called me Deku to make fun of me before. I'm really not sure what the intent behind the nickname is now. Midoriya stuttered. Oh, I thought Deku sounds like Dekaru. That means you can do it, so I like it. You can call me that. It would make it easier. Midoriya mumbled, twisting the straps of his back. The memory of being tortured and the attempt to break him came to his mind. And he turned pale as a sheet. Are you okay, Deku? You seem a bit off. Ada asked, peering at the smaller boy who had turned white. Yeah, recovery girl's powers just stimulates a person's natural healing ability. So I'm a bit tired after my ankle healed. Midori aside, the four students decided to stop standing around in school. And head home, still talking. Erg, the first day wasn't that bad, huh? Shinsu sighed, flopping over the sofa. His phone beeped, and he peered at it. Damn, my mom wants me back now. I guess I'll have to go now. Shinsu grabbed his bag and proceeded to leave. You know, you don't have to go back to them. You can stay here. Midori aside. Yeah, I know, but I'm technically still a minor and I can't do anything. I'm content enough to wait until I've graduated from UA. He looked away. I'll see you tomorrow. The green-haired boy couldn't sleep. He sighed, sat up, and headed for the door. A quick jog around the neighborhood wouldn't hurt, right? He had no idea how a jog ended like this. Midori was tired. He was wearing a green hoodie, black pants, and red sneakers, sitting the police interrogation room. Sukachi was sitting in the chair across from him. So, what's this about vigilantism? Sukachi asked, quite familiar with the boy to know he technically couldn't even commit vigilantism. Being quirkless and all, I didn't even do anything. I was jogging, and then when I passed this alleyway, there was someone getting mugged. So I tried to defend him, and the other guy pulled out a knife. So I knocked him out. Then there was this drunkard that was attacking people with a broken beer bottle, so I saved them too. Then this random guy jumped me with a wooden stick. It's all self-defense. I don't even know why people call me a vigilante. The boy grumbled out. I know that. Honestly, we can't arrest you anyway. All eyewitnesses agree with you. And honestly this conversation is just so we have records for something. The detective sighed. You doing okay? You seem really tired. I am tired. The boy admitted. I met Kakin. He was surprisingly nice to me. Then we had some tests that Eraserhead gave and he freaked the whole class out by saying the person in last place would be expelled. 
Then someone tripped my by accident and I sprained my ankle and you know how recovery girl's powers work, even though it didn't really hurt. Sukachi nodded. Then, Shinsu left early to go home. Midoriya sounded downright miserable. Is that a problem? Midoriya nodded I. I met them before. Once, his dad shouts at him all the time and his mom just downright doesn't care. True, Sukachi was about to ask another question. But a police officer ran into the room. Sir, we have reports of multiple houses and buildings caught on fire. The cause of it is unknown. Stay here, okay. Sukachi ordered Midoriya, who just nodded as he was brought to the waiting room. Sansa, keep an eye on him. Yes, sir. The cat-headed officer nodded. Izuku, a voice rang out. Midoriya turned and saw Shinsu run at him, enveloping him in a hug. Some police officers standing at the entrance to the station. Itoshi, what happened to you? Midoriya asked, concerned, as Shinsu sank down to sit beside him. I, they wanted me to go back, to stop hanging out with you. I snuck out in the middle of the night, and the whole place just burst into flames. Shinsu panted, coughing slightly. Midoriya quickly opened a bottle of water for the purple-haired teen, who gulped it down. I don't know how to feel about this whole thing. Shinsu sighed. Kirajiri, you sure you know what you're doing? Shigaraki asked. Yeah, those other fires were just a distraction. After all, what better way to break him than to destroy one of the few things that's important to him? A match struck, and the entire apartment burst into flames, invisible to the outside world due to the use of an illusion quirk. You sure you okay with this? Midoriya asked, as he and Shinsu walked to his house. Yeah, the detective guy said that he would discuss with Yagi, but I'll probably be able to stay with you. Are you still using the post office as your address though? Shinsu replied, slouching more than usual. His eye bags were getting better, but now they just looked horrible. Midoriya couldn't tell if he was crying or not. They walked in silence, until they finally reached Midoriya's house. But something was off. The smell of charred wood wafted in the air. Smoke trailed out of the building like smoky tendrils, blown away by the wind. The glass windows were shattered, the glass on the ground shining and glittering as if they were beckoning them to go and cut themselves. Midoriya freaked out. What? How? He peered in through the broken window, careful not to cut himself on the broken glass. The inside was equally trashed. Some of the support beams had fallen down. Furniture was broken and strewn all over the place. Shinsu tried to open the door, but he was stopped by Midoriya, who pulled him to the window. He pointed, and it was clear that if Shinsu had opened the door, a fallen support beam that was leaning on the door would immediately fall and crush him. Trying to steady his breathing, Midoriya carefully unlatched his window and crawled in, Shinsu following suit. Well, we can clear out the furniture. Maybe stabilize the support beams. Midoriya mumbled aloud. You seriously still want to live here? Shinsu asked warily, scooting carefully around the support beams to check on the rooms. Midoriya's room was completely charred, and his weights were strewn all over the floor, melted and stuck to the ground. His posters were torn and burnt, and ash wafted through the room. Some of the plaster on the ceiling had fallen off, and his table and books were broken and burnt. His mother's room was slightly better off. It were slightly charred, but the ceilings were perfectly fine and seemed to be in no immediate danger of falling. The furniture was still wrecked, and everything else was also charred. The bathrooms and the kitchens were somewhat fine, probably because they were less dry than the bedrooms. Midoriya was lucky all his analysis books were in his school bag that he had left it in the kitchen. His bag was scorched but everything else seemed fine. He went back to living room, only to find Midoriya lugging the couch so it wasn't so close to the broken splintered wooden beams. He went over and helped with it, and a piece of paper slipped out from between the couch cushions, and Midoriya picked it up. He immediately went pale and collapsed, paper clutched tightly in his hand. Izuku, Shinsu yelped, catching him before he fell, before peering at the paper. Hope you enjoy our little gift, little birdie. But us say chay 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 ch. No telling, or your precious little kakin goes poof. Tamura Midoriya trembled at the old nickname that Shigaraki had given him, because he was always so jumpy and mumbled so much and Shigaraki just enjoyed poking fun at the boy's faults. Shit, we should call Yagi-san. Shinsu helped Midoriya onto the sofa, but he just stubbornly shook his head. No, if we do, they'll go after Kakin. That's what they've been doing this entire time I've been with them. Shinsu frowned, not knowing how to deal with the entire situation. Let's just... Midoriya shakily stood up. Let's just clear the area and sleep. We still have school tomorrow. Everyone stared as Midoriya and Shinsu slowly walked into the classroom. They thought Shinsu looked tired on the first day, but now he looked even worse off than yesterday. Midoriya was the same. His eyes were half closed as he maneuvered to his seat, plopping his bag on the ground. The charred bag caught everyone's attention. What the hell Deku? Bakugu stared at the bag. Midoriya glared at Bakugu, but Bakugu just stared back, as if daring him to speak. Nothing. Some idiot with a fire quirk tried to pick a fight. He smashed his bag into the guy and we ran. Shinsu grumbled, lying smoothly through his teeth. Everyone immediately clammed up when Aizawa walked in through the door. 
He eyed the two tired students before starting to say something about lessons. Lessons for the day were boring. Present Mike taught English grammar. It was funny to see Present Mike calling on Ashido, Kaminari and Siro, only for them to get the entire sentence wrong with their nouns and verbs and adjectives strewn all over the place like it had been tossed in a blender which had exploded. Math was incredibly boring as well. Ectoplasm had just given them a typical math test to see how good they were. Midoriya and Shinsu had finished the whole thing in 20 minutes and spent the rest of the lesson napping while the remainder of the class struggled with it. Ectoplasm was expecting them to have messed up in paper and given up, and was instead surprised when both boys had gotten full marks. Cement us with modern literature was slightly more interesting. They had already studied the book before, while studying for the entrance exam, and halfway through the lesson, Midoriya had fallen asleep, leaning on his elbow. Seeing this, Cementos had asked Midoriya a question, and did not expect Midoriya to answer the question and give more details and explain even more connections with a deadpan voice that just made everyone stare at him like idiots. Lunch was okay. Lunch Rush was an excellent chef, and Midoriya and Shinsu were sitting with Ida and Yuraraka, and they immediately felt better after eating some yudon, even though Midoriya only ate a few strands before declaring himself full. Midoriya, you should eat more, Ida said, eating his meal. He was staring at Midoriya's mostly full bowl of yudon. Yeah, you guys seemed really tired in class. At least Shinsu is tucking in. Yuraka agreed, pointing to Shinsu who was wolfing down his noodles. I'm fine. I won't die from it. Midoriya mumbled, sipping on his tea. Lunch Rush refused to give him any coffee, so tea would have to do. Plus, we have basic hero training later. I don't want to throw up. Everyone thought about it. And even Shinsu slowed down to eat at a normal pace. True. I am. Coming through the door like a normal person. All Might exclaimed. Midoriya face palmed. It was just like Yagi to do something like that. It's All Might. That's the costume from the Silver Age, isn't it? Wow, he really is a teacher. His classmates were just gushing over the number one hero, while Aizawa just stood at the side, sighing at his noisy students. I teach basic hero training. It's a subject where you train in different ways to learn the basics of being a hero. Let's get right into it. What you will do today is combat training. He then pressed a button, and several shelves with numbers popped out. After you change, gather in Jim Gamma. As it was, they had gathered in a gym. All right. They say that clothes make the man, young men and ladies. Be fully aware that from now on, you are heroes. That's great everyone. You look cool. All Might gave them a thumbs up. Midoriya looked around. He was looking at everyone else's costumes. Koda's outfit was just a t-shirt and pants. And Midoriya guessed his quirk was either animal-related or kid-related. Sato's was plain yellow. But Takoyami and Shoji looked downright badass in their outfits. Todoroki looked okay. But he had no idea why he would want to cover his fireside with ice. Aoyama and Ida both looked like knights. Thought Aoyama's costume seemed a lot more sparkly and Ida's was more mecha-looking. Ajiro was wearing a martial arts outfit, which suited his style just fine, while Kaminari's and Kirishima's seemed to fit their quirks. Bakugu's were grenade-based. No surprise there, but he did wonder who designed his outfit, seeing as the other boy didn't even like to wear his pants properly. He didn't think he had a sense of fashion. Shinsu's outfit consisted of a black sleeveless vest and combat gloves, as well as slightly baggy pants with compartments for weapons. He also had the voice modifier that Midoriya had made and it was already approved by the support course through Aizawa, and a grey scarf that shared a resemblance with you-know-who. Aizawa did raise his eyebrows at the scarf, though. Shinsu also had two retractable batons. Like the voice modifier, Midoriya had made them. It was originally supposed to be a three-part staff that could be taken apart, but each individual part would be too long to remain inconspicuous. Instead, Midoriya had made it into a two-part staff, and each part could retract to half its length at the push of a button that was hidden so it didn't retract for no reason. This made it was a lot easier to carry. Midoriya himself had an identical staff. Shinsu still had no idea how Midoriya had managed to make something so sophisticated with only junk from the trash heap. Jairo and Asui's outfits were just fine. Mina and Yuraraka's outfits looked a bit tight, but Yeyorazu's and Hagakir's were concerning. Yeyorazu's was just way too revealing and Hagakir was literally just wearing boots and gloves. Midoriya resolved to do something about that. He didn't know his classmates that well, but there was something wrong with a girl walking around all the time naked. Midoriya himself was wearing a short-sleeved green shirt with an air filter mask, white forearm sleeves that were slightly armored to give him some protection, and black fingerless gloves. Luckily for him, his arm didn't have that many scars for people to gawk at. His long green pants were tucked into his slightly armored boots. Similar to Shinsu's, also had compartments for his retractable detachable staff. I believe some of you have weapons and equipment that you use in conjunction with your quirk or combat. 
or whatever. Can you guys share them with the rest of the class so we can minimize any injuries? Aizawa lazily droned, before calling students up one by one to show whatever devices they have that weren't there for pure aesthetic purposes. Gyro had shown that she had speakers on her legs. Bakugu showed his gauntlets that could store his sweat for later usage. Aoyama just had a belt that helped him control his quirk, and Ida just had a lot of armor. Asui had some goggles for some reason. And he didn't know why Kaminari would need a communication device. Shinsu, Midoriya. Aizawa raised an eyebrow as Midoriya jumped, but the two walked out anyways. Shinsu just explained he had a voice changer mask, while Midoriya just had an air filter. Um, this is a staff. Everyone just stared as Midoriya took out two, short, sticks. Those are more like batons. Asui remarked. Midoriya gave a small, slightly evil grin before putting the two pieces together. Everyone gawked as the two parts suddenly expanded to its full length, as the two parts connected to each other. Aizawa Sensei, why did we presenting together? Midoriya asked. You made all your and Shinsu's equipment. You should know the best. Aizawa deadpanned. What? You made it. How? That's awesome. His classmates surged forward, eyes shining as they complimented him. Midoriya was getting overwhelmed before Aizawa interrupted them. All right, break it up. We have a lesson to start. For this class, you will be split into pairs and would fight each other just so we can get a good grasp of how you fight. You will draw lots to decide pairs. It didn't take long for them to do that. Akigu vs. Kirishima Shinsu vs. Kota Kaminari vs. Jirogei Arazu vs. Aoyama Sato vs. Siro Asui vs. Ajiro Ashido vs. Ida Hagakure vs. Yuraka Todoroki vs. Takoyami Midoriya vs. Shoji. Shinsu wasn't really happy about that. Kota didn't really speak. And while they could hold a conversation using sign language, that meant that Shinsu's quirk was useless. The boy was against violence by nature, but he had scored right under Shinsu in the test. Plus, Shinsu didn't want to reveal his quirk so early on, since unlike his classmates' offensive quirks, his quirk was a lot easier to counter since all his opponents had to do was not speak. Midoriya, on the other hand, was thinking how to deal with Shoji. The boy was obviously a lot stronger. And while Midoriya definitely a lot faster and agile than the larger student, he would definitely lose if he was caught. You okay, Deku? Hiroraka placed her hand on Midoriya's shoulder while he was deep in thought, and he jumped, E.P. Ah sorry, Hiroraka apologized, and Midoriya sighed. Lucky it wasn't a villain or anything. Bakugo and Kirishima were pretty even. Bakugo had powerful blasts, but Kirishima's defense was impenetrable, until the red-haired boy was knocked over by a particularly powerful blast, making him release his quirk. Bakugo immediately pinned him down with a heated up hand on his throat until Kirishima conceded. Shinsu had it surprisingly easy. He had rushed at Kota with his staff in its two, retracted states, and managed to force Kota out of the box with his unrelenting attacks that Kota tried to dodge. Kaminari had released all his electricity at Gyro, who had fired off a loud sound blast to counter it. Kaminari did manage to knock Gyro out, but had short-circuited himself and tripped, falling flat on his face. So everyone considered it a tie. Yeorazu had managed to make a mirror to reflect Aoyama's laser back at him. While he was distracted, she made a pull and held it against Aoyama's throat, making her the winner. Without sugar, Sato was strong, but Siro was a lot faster and managed to tangle him up in tape in no time flat. Asui and Ajiro's match seemed more like a wild game of whack-a-mole, as Asui jumped all over the place while Ajiro tried to whack her out of the box. She eventually was able to take Ajiro by surprise and throw him out of the box with her tongue. Ida had blasted off, running at Ashido, as she used her acid to move faster as she skated around Ida to counter his speed. She then lost her balance after she skated over a rock, crashed into Ida, and they both tumbled out of the box. Ashido technically won because Ida was the first to fall over the line. Yuraka had no idea where Hagakir was, and the invisible girl was surprisingly strong enough to push Yuraka over the line. Todoroki won by a long shot, in the sunlight. Dark Shadow was a lot weaker and Todoroki just froze Takoyami the second the match started. Then, it was Midoriya and Shoji's turn. Hey, you sure this matchup is even fair? Kaminari gulped. Midoriya was the scrawniest guy in class with a non-offensive quirk. And Shoji is like, super strong. Did you forget who got first in the quirk apprehension test? Shinsu raised an eyebrow. Yeah, but tell me how the heck Midoriya can beat Shoji. The electric guy asked. T.C.H. Deku can beat him. Just watch, you fucking extra. Bakugu snarled. You are stronger than you look, by yesterday's quirk test. Shoji started, clenching his fists. But I'll end this quickly. Midoriya closed his eyes, and exhaled. Don't underestimate me. He opened his eyes and looked straight at Shoji, giving a small smirk. Shoji froze at the expression the smaller boy was giving him. He didn't know why fear washed over him. Midoriya didn't look intimidating at the slightest. He blinked, and Midoriya was right in his face, giving him a nasty punch in the face. Holy shit, he's fast. Kaminari jaw dropped. 
Groaning, Shoji raised his arms, transforming his extra appendages into fists, and retaliated, but Midoriya just danced out of his reach. He then shot forward, staff in hand and already at its connected, as he appeared right in Shoji's face. Oi, is he crazy? He'll get pummeled. Siro yelped. Shoji fired a volley of punches at the smaller boy on instinct, but he had already disappeared. It was a second too late before he realized that Midoriya had ducked beneath his punches and slid past him while he had put his entire weight forward. With one swipe of his staff, Midoriya had swiped his feet out from under him and Shoji was sprawled on the ground. He attempted to get up, but the cool touch on the back of his neck and the intense pressure on his back told him to do otherwise. Midoriya was a lot stronger than he looked. Give up already. If you so much as twitch, you're gonna get hurt. Shoji couldn't ignore the cold, chilling feeling in Midoriya's tone. Fear seeped into him, and he said the first thing that came to mind, I concede. Everyone jaw dropped at how effortlessly Midoriya managed to take out the physically strongest student in the class. The cold feeling immediately disappeared when All Might declared Midoriya the winner. The pressure on his back dissipated as Midoriya took his foot off the taller boy and stuck out his hand, a concerned smile on his face as he helped Shoji up, you okay? Shoji nodded, mutely. He was confused, very confused. Midoriya was nice, as far as he knew. He had defended Hagakure when he didn't have to, and he was super jittery and nervous, especially when his name was mentioned. He was short, he was scarony. He didn't even look scary at all. So why the heck was he so scared? They ended the exercise, with All Might asking the losers how they felt about the entire fight. Well, I'm too slow when I use my quirk, so Bakugo was able to catch me off guard. Kaminari grinned. I need to train more. Koda sighed that he didn't like violence and his quirk wasn't suited for fighting. Ayoma and Sato both mentioned needing to learn how to use their quirks more creatively instead of just shooting out whatever they had. Ajiro said he had to increase his speed, while Ida and Yuraka said they had to be more aware of their surroundings. Takoyami grunted that he needed to train more with Dark Shadow to use him effectively. Shoji remained quiet, as if he was thinking. What about you, young Shoji? All Might prompted. I was scared. Shoji mumbled. I completely underestimated Midoriya. Everyone just stared in surprise. Sure, from their vantage point, Midoriya didn't seem intimidating at all. Shoji was facing him one-on-one, -on -one, but it couldn't have been that bad, right? What do you mean, scared? All Might asked, equally as confused as the 16 students. Aizawa, however, understood, having faced the boy before, even though he was brainwashed at the time. I don't know. I can't be sure. But I know he was holding back. Everyone gasped. I'm so sorry. Midoriya apologized profusely. I didn't know how much you could take and I didn't want to hurt anyone too badly and I Shinsu let out a sharp bark of laughter, pressing down on Midoriya's head. You couldn't hurt anything to save your life. What? Midoriya retorted, glaring at Shinsu, who just grinned. Remember last week you apologized so much for almost stepping on an ant. Ants are living things too and should be respected. Midoriya shot back. Everyone sweat dropped. Yeah sure, Shoji. Sato asked. Yeah, I could see him tensing up every time before he did anything, most likely to restrain himself. Shoji looked at his hands, I need to get stronger, way stronger. Well, we're all here. Change and return to the classroom. All Might yelled, dashing away. Honestly, I still can't believe what you did with the zero pointer in the entrance exam. Iraraka laughed. Don't laugh. What he did was extremely risky and he could have died. Ida retorted. Hey, what did he do in the entrance exam? Hiroshima asked, as Ashido and Kaminari ran up beside them. He told Yuraka to float him to the robot's neck so he could disable it. Shinsu grumbled. I kinda dropped him by accident. Yuraka sheepishly smiled. That was my fault though. Shinsu sighed. I think he climbed up the arm, disabled it. And when it was going to fall over, jumped to safety on a building. Ida continued. I'm alive, so what's the problem? Midoriya whined. You almost died. We were worried. Ada scolded. Also you decided to jump off a three-story building when he told you to get back. What were you thinking? Are you suicidal? Kaminari blurted out. Midoriya stopped walking. The air around the group immediately became tense. Shit, Shinsu inwardly cursed. Midoriya turned back to the group, looking blankly at Kaminari. I'm not. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief. Not anymore. The day ended with a tense atmosphere in the classroom. No one, not even Bakugou or Shinsu, said a single word to Midoriya after the basic heroics course. It probably has to be problem child, again. Aizawa sighed, looking at the class. Shinsu was glowering at Bakugou, who had slumped over with a guilty expression on his face. Midoriya was staring at the window, and the rest of the class were whispering furiously, casting glances at Midoriya every now and then. The next few days passed like a blur. Shinsu and Midoriya had managed to clean the place up a bit, 
as well as managing to secure the support beams so they no longer had to fear being crushed to death in the middle of the night as they slept. They were also supposed to choose class reps, and after some voting, Midoriya was chosen as class rep while Yeirazu was the assistant rep. However, Midoriya couldn't stand so many people looking at him while he stood at the front of the class, and promptly passed to roll over to Ida, reasoning that Ida like order and would be a better class rep. Lessons were still boring, but they were becoming increasingly painful. At least, in middle school, when he was with Shinsu, everyone just ignored them like he didn't exist. Hiroraka was nice to talk to, since she loved calling him Deku. Bakugo wasn't that bad either. And though he still swore like crazy on a daily basis, he no longer shoved him around and even interrupted conversations when they started straying to quirks. The others, and the teachers? Not so fun. He couldn't help it. But each time someone called him, each time someone placed a hand on his shoulder, he couldn't help but instinctively think about Shigaraki and his ability to disintegrate all that he touched, or the pain he felt whenever he responded to the wrong name. It didn't help that his classmates and teachers had to call him a few times, since sometimes he just didn't seem to register the said name as his own, or he just jumped in shock. They probably thought he was jittery, or they had scared him, or Midoriya was just deep in thought, but he knew that one of his teachers thought differently. Everyone was working on their homework in homeroom. While Aizawa was looking at the papers that they had handed up, they were supposed to write a short essay on quirk laws. Since Kaminari had fried a minor villain a day ago, he didn't get into trouble because eyewitnesses had said that the villain had poked him with a knife and he had panicked, frying the villain by accident. Aizawa was looking through them when he came across Midoriya's. Midoriya had written a long two-page essay, well more than what the others had written. It was only when he got to the end that Aizawa had any problems. Technically, I could fight criminals if they attack first and claim it as self-defense. I don't have a quirk so technically I'm not breaking any laws. Aizawa sighed and face-palmed. Of course, the quirkless kid would find a way to help people without breaking the law. He looked up from the paper, seeing Midoriya, who was busy scribbling something on some paper, and called out, Midoriya. No response. Huh, maybe he didn't hear him. No one else in the class seemed to notice him calling the student either. Aizawa cleared his throat and spoke again. This time a bit louder, Midoriya. Most of the students looked at the teacher, before looking at said student. Aizawa blinked when Midoriya was one of them. It didn't even seem like Midoriya had registered it was his name being called. Aizawa sighed again, and called out again, still getting that strange reaction from Midoriya. Boy, Deku, what the fuck is wrong with you? Bakugu asked. Aizawa would have called him out for swearing, but Bakugu just sounded downright worried. Hell, Aizawa himself was worried for the problem child. Hey, Kakin, what did I do? Midoriya asked, blinking. Teacher called you. Oh, he did. Sorry, Aizawa-sensei. I thought you were calling someone else. Midoriya rubbed his head sheepishly, getting up from what he was scribbling, walking to the teacher's table. Are you okay? Aizawa asked. The vigilante comment in the essay forgotten. Don't think I haven't noticed how you react when others talk to you. I'm fine, Aizawa-sensei. It's just the press. They got too near. The boy placed a big smile on his face, but Aizawa could tell that it was fake. Very fake. Midoriya was shy and being hounded by the press probably didn't help. He was lucky that it seemed that no one seemed to recognize the smaller boy as the one who was kidnapped by the Purple Mist Portal almost a year ago. But he knew that Midoriya was stubborn, and he would most likely carry all his pain until the burden becomes too heavy and crushed him. The bell rang, and Aizawa sighed. He was going to have to cut this conversation short. Maybe he would hold the boy back after lessons to talk to him. Or maybe he should wrangle Shinsu into helping him find out what was wrong with Midoriya. Get ready for your next lesson, Aizawa grumbled, pointing to his essay. Also, stop joking around. Midoriya grinned again, this time much more genuine. Got it, sensei? Nay, nee. Ada-kun, are you related to the turbo hero, Ingenium? Midoriya asked. Ada choked on his food. What? I quote him sorry. I was assuming because you have engines on your legs and he has engines on his arms and you came from Summy which is in the same area that Ingenium is most commonly seen in and your hero costume looks so similar to his and Midoriya stopped yelling as he choked, gasping for air as Shinsu pat him on the back. You're not wrong. I'm surprised you managed to figure that out. Ada said. He's the really popular hero who has 65 sidekicks working at his Tokyo agency. Midoriya gushed, starting to spout more and more Ingenium facts until he was blue in the face. Hiroraka and Ida were just staring at him, gaping at the sheer amount of information Midoriya was spouting. He was interrupted by as a loud alarm sounded. There has been a level 3 security breach. All students please evacuate outdoors immediately. Who got into the school grounds? Midoriya mumbled, walking to the windows as everyone pushed and shoved their way out of the cafeteria. Deku, Hiroraka yelped, as she was swept off her feet by the stampeding horde. Ada immediately tried to push his way back to help her, but he was swept away by the crowd. Guys, calm down. It's just the press, Midoriya tried saying. 
but everyone's pushing and screaming wasn't helping. The fact that the press, of all things, managed to break in wasn't helping his nerves. He suddenly felt short of breath and leaned against the wall for support. Electricity shot out from the middle of the horde. Kaminari probably panicked again, but the electric blast managed to stun everyone just enough for them to calm down. Everyone calm down. Ada yelled, it's just the press. Everything is fine. This is Yue. Let us act in a way befitting the best of the best. You okay, Izuku? Shinsu asked, helping the boy up. He was trembling, but he managed to respond, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. It was just the press right. So why did everything just feel so wrong? Midoriya glanced outside, managing to make out a hole in the UA metal gates behind all the reporters. It didn't seem like the reporters had a quirk like that, or they would have made their way in way earlier. And why did the gate look like it was disintegrated? No, 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 no. Midoriya gasped, scrambling away from the window, almost falling down if Shinsu hadn't caught him. Izuku, Izuku, Shinsu shook the poor boy, trying to catch his attention. Deku, what's wrong? Iraraka ran up to the shaking boy. Me, Itoshi, the wall was just... You think, it's him. Emerald green eyes looked into Shinsu's lavender ones, and Shinsu immediately knew who Midoriya meant. The blue-haired guy with a weird obsession for hands. He could never forget watching how Midoriya's arm just... Flaked off, revealing the muscle in the blood below. Shinsu used that opportunity to grab hold of Midoriya's mind. Calm down. It's probably someone else with a coincidentally similar quirk. Just breathe. Ada and Yuraka just stood to the side, watching as Midoriya was finally able to calm down enough to get up. What do you think that was about? Ada asked. No idea, but it didn't sound good. Yuraka sighed. For today's basic hero training, it has turned into a with three instructors. All Might, me, and one more person. We will be doing rescue training, disasters, shipwrecks, and everything in between. You can decide if you want to wear your costume or not this time, since some of your costumes might hinder your abilities. Aizawa said, before Ida started ushering everyone onto the bus. Ni, Midoriya. Oh yeah, Asui. Midoriya tried his best to avoid jumping. Call me Tsu. Do you have an analysis quirk or something? No way. He has an IQ quirk or some memory quirk. Did you see how much information he had about Ingenium? He was like an encyclopedia. Yuraka pipped up. Did you see those things he built? Pretty sure he has an inventing quirk or something. Kirishima grinned. I think he has a speed quirk. He was so fast when he fought Shoji. Kaminari shot. Huh, true. It's nice to have a simple augmenting type quirk. My hardening is strong against others, but it doesn't look like much. Kirishima sighed, showing the others what he meant as his arm turned crystal looking. That looks really cool. It can definitely pass as a prose. Does hardening change your density to that of a rock? Do you become heavier? Can you harden your entire body? Maybe you can jump off a building and harden yourself so you land on an enemy like a heavy rock bullet. But then if you miss you might hurt yourself we're almost there. Stop messing around, problem child. Aizawa groaned. Hey, why does he call you problem child? Mina asked, lowering her tone. Probably because he almost got himself killed at the entrance exam. Shinsu sighed, glancing at Midoriya. Midoriya was glad that they finally got off the topic of what his non-existent quirk was. He would tell him, eventually, in due time, when he was ready. He didn't expect the time to come so soon. Thirteen was explaining the USJ facility to the students, and the dangers of their quirk when suddenly, the light started flickering. The fountain started spouting water at random intervals, as if it was choking. A purple misty purple appeared out of this air. Midoriya gasped, his body involuntarily tensing up. Shinsu had also seen the portal, and shifted to position himself slightly in front of Midori. Aizawa noticed how Bakugu had also subtly made his way from the back of the group to the front, positioning himself beside Midoriya, and narrowed his eyes. Something was wrong. Whirling around, he saw the portal just as it erupted, making the portal even bigger. A single hand made its way through the portal, followed by body, and more and more villains started to pour into the facility. Is this like the entrance exam where the lessons already started? Kirishima asked, peering down the stairs. Get back, fuckface. Bakugu growled, shoving Kirishima behind him. Those are villains. And you know that? Why? Kaminari hissed, only for the man with a hand on his face to speak up. Thirteen and a racer hat. The schedule said that All Might would also be here. I went through the trouble to bring this whole crowd to kill the symbol of peace, and he's not here. I wonder if he'll come if we kill some kids. Thirteen. Protect the students, Aizawa ordered, grabbing hold of his capture weapon. Fluffy green hair caught his attention, and he perked up. Ah, if it isn't the little birdie. Midoriya tensed up at the nickname. You know, we really ought to punish you for running away. No, little Izuku. Midoriya flinched, as the man laughed. Oops, looks like you forgot that you weren't supposed to respond to that name. Too bad, we'll just have to fix you when we bring you back. Aizawa scowled. Of course the boy was all jittery and scared. He's been conditioned to not respond to his name. They probably tried to break him and take away his identity. 
And you, little Izuku let you escape, didn't he? And you went and called for help from those silly little heroes. Shinsu growled, clenching his fist. Sensei, don't we have trespasser sensors? Yorazu asked. No, he's smart. They obviously plan to attack All Might as an isolated facility where we can't call for backup. Midoriya mumbled, gripping his arm, trying to calm him down. You, purple misty shit. You were the one who kidnapped Deku. Bakugu roared, explosions popping in his palms as he rushed forward. But Midoriya pulled him back. Kakin, no. Ah, uh, Bakugu Katsuki, right. You must be the Kakin that the little birdie cared about so much. I don't give a shit who you are, fucking hand man. And just so you know, we didn't have a use for the quirkless little kid, you know. And you wanna know why we kept little Izuku? The man sneered, because he was determined. And he was so much fun. I disintegrated him, we tried to break him. And he still refused to die. He kept saying, if I die, then you'll go after Kakin. It's disgustingly sweet. Everyone gasped at the revelation that Midoriya was quirkless. Izuku growled, just because I'm quirkless doesn't mean I'm useless. Shigaraki just sent a wave of villains at them, and Aizawa immediately jumped in to deal with them. Ah, uh, the racer head. I remember you. Shigaraki drawled, seemingly not caring as his fodder villains were thrown around by the erasure hero. While his back was turned, a horde of villains rushed up the stairs towards the students. The racer head tried to turn around to help them, but a mutant-type villain hit him and a racer head had no choice but to dodge. Get out of here. 13 ordered, but Midoriya didn't move. Boy, Midoriya, let's go, Kirishima yelled. Izuku, come on. Shinsu tried to urge him, but Midoriya refused to listen and turned towards the villains. Midwarya, you're quirkless. You can't possibly think of fighting them. You're gonna get hurt. We have to Kaminari was cut off when Midoriya suddenly snapped. Shut up. You don't know me. The villains finally made their way to the top of the staircase, and the rest students turned around and ran towards the doors, only to be stopped by the portal guy. Hello, we are the League of Villains. We have invited ourselves into the home of the heroes, UA High School, in order to kill All Might, the symbol of peace. Shit, we're surrounded. Jiru hissed, eyeing the ten or so villains that cornered them against Kirajiri. Well, look at these so-called heroes. One of them laughed, get out of the way. Midoriya growled. Hey, isn't this the quirkless kid? One of them laughed, reaching out to grab Midoriya by the neck. Let's have some fun with him. In a flash, he quickly assembled his staff and bashed the guy who spoke on the head and kicked him away, sending him stumbling into a few of his comrades. A few other villains tried to grab him, but he jumped and dodged, kicking one in the face that propelled him into the air and sent the villain tumbling down the stairs. He retracted the staff and got in close with two of the villains, activating the retracted staff to now extend. He jabbed the two halves of the staff under two of the villain's chins and the staff knocked them into the air as it grew to its full length. Another one grew a tail, and sent multiple spikes hurtling towards the group, but Midoriya knocked all of the away and kicked the villain in the gut. Boy, are you sure he's quirkless? One of the villains backed up, and Midoriya took the chance to whack him on the head, knocking him out. Two more villains got on either side of him, and Midoriya flicked his eyes between the two villains, trying to figure out what he would do next. One turned his arm into knives and rushed at Midoriya who ducked and dodged in the last second before sweeping his legs out from under him and causing him to crash and cut his ally. Get out of my way, nerd. Bakugu roared, jumping over Midoriya and blasting the remaining two villains in the chest. Bakugu grinned as the last of the villains in front of them crumpled, and grinned at Midoriya, not bad, nerd. Midoriya grunted, I'm sick of running away. He walked to the front of the group, and his classmates parted to make a path for him. He stopped in front of Kirajiri. Kirajiri. Kirajiri sighed, even proved, rat. Get out of the way. You know I can't do that. I'm loyal to Shigaraki Tamura. Before either could continue, Bakugu and Kirishima lunged at the portal user, slamming into him with an explosion and a hardened fist respectively. Oh dear. That's dangerous. That's right. Even if you are students, you are excellent golden eggs. Kirajiri mocked. Thirteen popped the cap off their finger. Get away from them. Kirajiri sighed. I have nothing against kids, you know. You aren't even real heroes yet. We just want to kill All Might. His purple mist blasted through the group of students, warping them away.